15 seconds. Break ends in five seconds. thinks frisbee golf is the sport of the future she's sticking with football they are maggie and perloff on cbs sports radio big big win for the dallas cowboys hey good morning it is maggie and perloff here on cbs sports radio we are the brand new morning show and this was a sign to take a deep breath, Dallas Cowboys fans. It is not as bad as what you saw against the 49ers a week ago. This was a close game on the road. I know it's not the most hostile environment for Cowboy fans <laughs> to be in the Chargers stadium. A lot of Cowboys fans there, including LeBron James and others. But here's the here's the positives is you were finally in a close game. The Cowboys' first five games have been decided by 40 points, 20 points, 12 points, 35 points, and 32 points. You had not been in a close game, and here you were in the fourth quarter needing a score, and Dak Prescott was able to lead that drive that led to the go-ahead field goal. I thought Dak was good yesterday. Uh, It had me a little bit nervous. Mike McCarthy had me a little bit nervous in this game, (laughs) but ultimately they were able to get the victory. And again, a big exhale, I think, if you're a Cowboys fan. Well, here's the thing with Dak Prescott. When Dak decides that he's going to move a lot, they can really move the ball a lot. You are right. But he's keeping plays alive. I know Dak Prescott really well. I watch the Cowboys. He's going to get hurt at some point. Because last night, it was his legs that gave the Cowboys that win. That play to Tony Pollard. He basically... The touchdown that he ran in for 18 yards? No, the 60-yard pass. No, that one, but also running in a touchdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, exactly. But Dak, how many sacks did he escape last night? The other thing, it was a reminder that the Cowboys defense is elite. I think we forgot about that after the Niners. Remember, they were dominant early in the season. I think the main mismatch in last night's game was Dan Quinn against the Chargers because Dan Quinn obviously probably knows Kellen Moore's offense yeah. like the back of his hand. I didn't think uh, – I thought they, they definitely they covered everything for most of the game. They frustrated Justin Herbert. To me, I credit the Cowboys' defense. And it wasn't glamorous. Like Micah Parsons wasn't eating the whole game. He had a huge sack at the end of the game. Yeah, massive. But it was, it was a reminder, ooh, the Cowboys' defense is really tough. And I actually think that's the key to this team. Yeah, it is. And it wasn't just Micah Parsons coming through when they needed it on the final drive. So Justin Herbert and the Chargers get the ball back with about two and a half minutes or so left in the game. They're down by three points. Like, this is... It's not where you hope to be if you're a quarterback, but like as far as trying to go to uh, drive your team down the field, if you are going to be trailing in a game, this is like as good as it gets. Like over two and a half minutes, you get the two-minute warning and you have timeouts at your disposal, and Dallas just like snuffed it out. It was Micah Parsons with the big sack, and then it was Stephon Gilmore who came up with the game-sealing interception. And so you feel great about that, especially after it had been the type of game where the penalties – were such a big part of the game because defenses were not given an inch. They were calling, holding on everything. You really had to be on your P's and Q's. So for the Cowboys to come and their defense to come up with that big stop, I saw it spoke volumes for them. Yeah, there was a third and one where Austin Eckler ran for a first down for the Chargers, and they called a hold. I, In my mind, there's never a hold on third and one. I mean, the guy just hooked him. And anytime a holding is really the defensive guy fell. That's what holding is in the NFL today. I, I think that they need to stop. There were 11 penalties accepted on the Cowboys and yeah. nine on the Chargers. I thought it decimated the whole game, especially it hurt the Chargers offense more, I think, than the Cowboys because they couldn't get anything going. And then they would save it. It just was a mess. I thought they called way too many ticky-tack things for a primetime game. I thought it was a slog of a game. It was not a pretty game by any means. And the other thing, too, is... You said it's an it's a exhale for the Cowboys. I like that. But did you walk away saying, oh, man, this is the, a dominant team in the NFC? Are they a, a Tier 1 NFC team? Because I'm not sure after beating the Chargers. To be honest, I think the Lions have taken their spot. So mm. credit to the Lions. I think the Lions are now there with the 49ers and your, and your Philadelphia Eagles. I don't know if the Cowboys are. But I'll tell you what, if it was the flip side of this and the Cowboys had lost that game on a last-minute drive by yeah. the Chargers, we'd be killing the Cowboys. Of course. So... 
That's true. <laughs> I think for for that purpose, they kind of like exhale. You can fend off the dogs a little bit. The dogs being sort of the media, the critics, whatever. Internally, you should probably they they had to be very critical of themselves after the San Francisco loss. How could you not be? That tape was disgusting. So. I think maybe just everybody gets a little bit of pressure off their shoulders. It doesn't mean you don't you aren't, you know, feeling pressure the rest of the year. It doesn't mean you're off the hook. And no, I do not think they are in that top, top, top tier of the mm. NFC anymore. I do think the Lions have replaced them. Uh, okay. Yeah. I would like to what's the spread if the Cowboys play the Lions in either Dallas or Detroit? Well, I don't even know if I actually care what the spread is because yeah. I think the spread would be a little bit even on reputation, yeah. which is the Lions' terrible reputation for their basically entire existence and the Cowboys being America's team. So I'll tell I, you I'd what, like I would see, bet the Lions no matter where it was. I'd like to see that Lions' offense handle Dallas's defense. I'm not quite there with you. I think they, they actually probably will end up playing in the playoffs. Yeah. I think that's a matchup that Dallas would not be afraid of for one second. Uh, especially because it's going to be basically indoors no matter where yep. it is. I feel like that's a that's a matchup. I don't think Dallas is scared of Detroit at all. But that's besides where Detroit's beaten like the worst, the string of the worst teams in the league. We have no idea how they met. I know the Kansas City game in the beginning of the season. We have no idea how they match up against an elite team. I think the Cowboys are tier closer to tier one than Detroit. I think they could win this division easily. Uh, if they basically win one of the matchups against the Eagles, have a ridiculously hard schedule coming up. Cowboys have a really light schedule. Yeah. I think there's a great chance they win this division. They're probably not going to win the conference. I think Detroit has a good chance, but I think they're going to be in good position. They're going to be 12-5. and five. I watch this team. I say the same thing. Okay, win a regular season game. Same problem. Can Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott win a huge playoff game? That I don't know yet. Well, that remains to be seen. Yeah. And they got the one-up, though, on former offensive coordinator Kellen Moore, yeah. who they couldn't do a whole heck of a lot. Last night, you mentioned Dan Quinn against Kellen Moore was really where this game was won. Let's hear from Dak Prescott. Um, let's talk here. Cut 10, please, Pete, about Dak Prescott needing to focus on peaking at the right time. Obviously, as it gets latter latter part of the year, it'll show a playoff picture, but... We've got to focus on getting better, peaking at the right time, uh, being the best versions of ourselves every week that we show up um, and just continuing to make strides of getting better. Yeah, you mentioned that the next part of the schedule, a little bit softer um, for the Cowboys. Now, they play the, they're play they in the bye week now, uh, going into their bye. Then the Rams, then at your Eagles, so that's obviously tough. But then the Giants, Carolina, Washington. You get Seattle, but you get them at home before a stretch of Philly at Buffalo, at Miami, and then Detroit. So the, it's going to be interesting because I think the Cowboys, outside of that game at Philadelphia, can get some really positive momentum oh, yeah. here. And if they want to be peaking at the right time, it's later. It's December. Well, January, you hope, right? But it's December where it's Eagles at Buffalo, at Miami, Detroit, yeah. and then your commanders to finish out the season. Let me remove the drama for you. They're going to be 12 and 5. <laughs> it's going to be your, They like to repeat the same record over and over. Remember that stretch where they were 8 and 8 every year with Jason yes. Garrett? Now they're 12 and 5 every year with Mike McCarthy. So they, they, they got to stay healthy. They got to get in the playoffs. They're clearly a playoff team. The question is, is it different from last year? That's what I don't quite know. Well, it was supposed to be more of the run game. That wasn't that that hasn't been mm. featured in a mm. way that I think all of us were expecting. But that was it was supposed to be. Remember, you know, Mike McCarthy yep. wanted to take over play calling responsibilities from Kellen Moore because he wanted to run the damn ball and they didn't want it to be all about pouring on points. They wanted more ball control to help out the defense so the defense wasn't so gassed um and could get a little bit of a breather. I'm not seeing that no. overwhelmingly. But again, you get into colder weather, a little bit more down the stretch, maybe that starts to show itself. Yeah, I mean, I think you're going to win with defense. This is, the, you saw it last night. This is the best thing they have going is their pass rush at the end of a game. Yeah. The ability to close a game, that's what really, really good teams do. I, I don't blame Justin Herbert for it because once that Cowboys defensive line started moving downhill, they're really tough to stop. I, I think the Eagles are going to have a hard time with that defensive line as well. That is the dominant unit for the Cowboys. So they can win with that formula. It's just last night you came away with it being like, yeah, they're good, but are they a great team? And I didn't see great. Well, speaking of not great, um, Justin Herbert on the other side yeah. and the L.A. Chargers, a team I think that got a little bit anointed, not the head coach. Brandon Saley's always been under duress, but – you know, that the quarterback, because he is such a great arm, because he has these wild plays, because he looks like a quarterback's quarterback. Like, other quarterbacks are jealous of what he has and his mm -hmm. arm talent. 
and his like physical tools and all of that. He's not a runner per se, but you know, he's able to scramble for some first downs. But forgive me if I want to see Justin Herbert finally go win a game. Again, two and a half minutes left with timeouts at home. I know the Dallas defense is good, but you're supposed to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. You're definitely getting paid like one of the best quarterbacks in the league now with the big contract extension. I think the expectations have always been high for Herbert, and I have yet to see him really come through in a big game. And I, he, it leaves me wanting more from him. Yeah, I, I totally know what you mean. He definitely missed some throws last night. He had a little hand injury. The other hand, not a throwing yeah, the non-throwing hand. non-throwing hand. But... Uh, what around that team is so good? Like, tell me who you want uh, that the Chargers okay. have on offense. The run game is beyond. He had no run game at all last night. Yeah, Eckler coming back off the injury. 14 carries, 27 yards. That's a huge problem. There, he had to do everything last night against a great defense. So I, I'm not going to walk away from that game judging Herbert. Okay, here's the thing about Herbert. 38 one-score games since he came into the yeah. league in 2020. It's the second most of any quarterback in that stretch. He's 18 and 20 in those games. That's four more losses than any other QB there. I know wins, losses are not a quarterback stat, but sometimes it does tell you a bit about the story here. And th- here's the mm. thing about Herbert not having anyone around him, or I-, I don't even know that's true. He missed Keenan Allen on two big throws that would have been explosives. He missed him. I mean, he admitted that he missed him. Yeah. They tried to get him help with Quentin Johnson, who's a rumor right now, even though he's a rookie wide receiver. They've invested in the offensive line. I guess, like, here's Ooh. my thing. What they Rashawn Slater is a first round draft pick. I know, but that offensive line has definitely struggled a little bit. They have, but here's the thing about with Herbert, it's never going to be perfect. You're never going to have the perfect pocket. You're never going to have yeah. the cleanest everything. Like it, that's just not how the NFL is. So when you are expected to be one of the top quarterbacks in the league, you have to at times overcome some of the deficiencies on your team. He was hurried last night. He was harassed last night. But you know what? That's where the great quarterbacks still have an opportunity to make plays. And he came up short in the final drive. Yeah, I mean, he, but the Cowboys knew exactly what was going on. They had him pinned back. I think the offensive line failed him. The interception at the end of the game, we were arguing before the show. I mean, he was a should he have just taken the sack? Is that what you wanted? At least he would add fourth down then still to play. You're definitely in four down territory. I thought it was a duck it of a throw. Thir- it was a, he was about to get tackled and he sidearm one where Gilmore made a great play on the ball. And basically the receiver, also the receiver probably could have knocked the ball away or tried something. They were both on the ball. The ball was short. It was desperate. It's third and 10. It, it was a desperation throw. He had no pocket. He had no, nowhere to go. He couldn't have escaped out of the back. I, I think of those close losses, it's on Brandon Staley, not Justin Herbert, to me. He deserves the blame as well. I think of but, all those close losses, how many of them were because of some weird decision by Brandon Staley, the head coach? Yeah, but it's not all, you know, going for fourth and one at your own 25 or I something. I think 90% like, of it is. I, it's not. Yeah. Listen, he's not good. I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to stand up for Brandon Staley. But the thing about Herbert is you mentioned the pocket. I mean, we counted it out. It was like three and a half Mississippi. Oh. What more are you getting in this league, especially on an obvious passing down? Like, you have to be able to get the ball out faster. I, I just want to see Justin Herbert in a big-time moment actually go out and win the game. I don't know. I think they need a new coach, then we'll see that. I think Staley's probably going to get fired after this year. Probably, but they have I, Kellen Moore now, who was responsible for a top offense in Dallas. And and Justin yeah, they Herbert... Won, Kellen Moore won what again? About 12 games a year, which is not what the Chargers are winning. And Justin Herbert is better than Dak Prescott. So why doesn't it look better? I, what do you mean look better? I mean, his top his stats are top four or five in the league. He's still elite. I think he's... I think he's got he's got nine touchdowns, two picks. He's fourth in the league in passer rating. I mean, he's still awesome. Okay, and had two opportunities so far yeah. this season. One against the Miami Dolphins, and the last night against the Dallas Cowboys, where you're home, excuse me, and the Titans too, where you're right. home and you have the ball and you have enough time and you have timeouts and you didn't do anything. I think it's fair to criticize him it's about fa- this. It's fair to criticize. They're going against a great defense. They had no run game. They Nobody wins when you carry the ball. Four, your primary running back has 14 carries for 27 yards. That's a recipe for a loss. I just don't walk away. I look at the Chargers, and I'm not blaming Justin Herbert. It's a meh team. It's a meh wide receiving core. It's not a, a meh, meh quarterback, though. Yeah, but everything around him is, is not great. I, I don't think any other... I don't think I don't think Patrick Mahomes is going in that team and just dominating with that coaching staff. And Kellen Moore is okay. Kellen Moore definitely. Did you when he was in the red zone last night? Did you have any confidence in the plays he called at all? Well, but it was it worked in Dallas. Like 
and as Dallas, we t- we lament the Dallas weapons. Now, CeeDee well CD Lamb came through with a really big game last night, and Brandon Cooks had a big touchdown. But I It mean, worked at Dallas because they played nobody last year. Honestly, I, I, I'm I not a big Kellen Moore guy right now. Well, I don't even if you don't have to be a big Kellen Moore guy, you can't argue with the numbers that he yeah. was the architect and he was running one of the most productive offenses over the last few years with the Cowboys. That's why they hung on to him. You know, even I think Mike McCarthy probably would have gotten rid of him a little bit earlier. But the numbers were there and the stats were there. Now it's not being replicated yeah, with the Chargers. I think it's coaching, 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 personnel. They need a fast player on that offense somewhere. They need a running game. They need a better offensive line. They need so many different things. I just can't look at Justin Herbert as a problem with the Chargers. Here is Herbert. Let's hear a cut 14, please, Pete. Uh, Justin Herbert said he missed too many opportunities. You know, Keenan ran two great routes and I missed them. And, and so that's on me as a quarterback. And we have those explosive opportunities and um, we have to capitalize on those. You know, that's a really good defense that we're going up against. And, um, you know, I, I can't miss those like that and expect to, you know, to continue to, to get back on third down and get back on track on second down. So, uh, you know, tough opportunities. Um, but we'll watch the film and be too critical on ourselves. So and we'll learn from it. There you go. So putting the blame on himself for those two explosives that they missed with Keenan Allen. I mean, for sure. And no one's ever going to say Justin Herbert's not going to stand up there and take his medicine. It's, it's more just I want to see something more at the end of games, and it doesn't get easier for them. Uh, the Chargers go to Kansas City next week for a 425 Eastern oh, game. That, that's going to be good. Can we get some offensive games, by the way? That was <laughs> no, that was no. from start to finish a disappointing. Well, actually, it started out like it looked like there was going to be some offense. I was expecting a lot of scoring last night, and it was grinding it out. I think the officials completely ruined the game. I don't yes. know why you have to throw that many flags. I agree with you there. Incidental contact, but it, it was a tough game to watch to me. I mean, Dak, basically Dak created something out of nothing for the Cowboys. Otherwise, they didn't have anything going on. And Herbert, by the end, the, the offensive line was just worn out. They just got destroyed. 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. Cowboy fans, you're welcome to weigh in. And, and Justin Herbert fans, you're welcome to weigh in. Exhale for the Cowboys. They get everyone off their back for a week after a bad loss to San Francisco. They rebound with a good win on the road and now go into their bye. Meanwhile, Justin Herbert, is it fair to criticize him for the end of the game? 855-212-4CBS. Don't move. More Maggie and Pearl off straight ahead. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remain. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. There's one thing I want you to do for me. What? Come here. What? Eat the chili. No hands. What are we waiting for? Take this!
two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. disagreement this morning. I think you guys are drastically overrating the Chargers roster around Justin Herbert. I think they are slow. They are old in some spots. Their defense is disappointing. I don't put it on Justin Herbert. Maggie, you blame the quarterback. You want to see a big win? Come on, win a game. You got the, you got the ball Dude, in your hands. That coach Two stinks. minutes left to go in timeouts. Win the game. Get a new staff in there. Make some, first of all, anytime that they do move the ball, it's Justin Herbert through a pass that no human on earth except for him and Josh Allen could throw. Here's my question about last night's game. Yeah. LeBron James is in the crowd. Yeah. Is LeBron James more of an NFL analyst right now or an NBA <laughs> player? Because I feel like he's obsessed with football. I, I thought he was there like maybe in the locker room getting injury reports and stuff like that. He's very yeah. much into analyzing the NBA or I, the NFL. I feel like he has very little interest in the, his, the Lakers, basketball. He never talks about it. He would... Yeah, he'd go to Monday Night Football tomorrow. He'd leave <laughs> NBA and be an announcer there. I mean, what's more to talk about? He's yeah. year 21. He's never going to win this yeah. Jordan debate. Like, it's just, they went to the Western Conference yeah. Finals last year, which I thought was like a minor miracle. He had a quote about how he wants to see Anthony Davis take more three-pointers. I mean, geez, how many times have we, <laughs> like, does anybody care on, about Anthony Davis taking his game to the next level? We've heard that a million times. You're well, right. But, He's but done Anthony Davis got to stay healthy. That's the key. Yeah, like, no I kidding. mean, come on. We've heard that a hundred million times. <laughs> He's done with the NBA analysis. I, I hope he continues this throughout the rest of the season once the actual regular season starts. Because he's pretty good. He knows his football. I, his picks have been dynamite. <laughs> I don't wonder how much he's actually betting on these, if at all. But you got to be careful with that as a professional athlete. But uh, So a, a conversation has broken out in the chat. YouTube.com yeah. slash CBS Sports Radio if you want to watch the show. Because Perloff and I are gorgeous. Um, <laughs> yeah. Especially at this hour. But no, come on in. Bill Belichick. Yeah. Is he the perfect coach oh. to take over the Chargers next year? Absolutely not. Yeah, I don't see the perfect fit here either, but go ahead. Oh, well, first of all, he's on a team that is too slow and just wrong. If he comes to that Chargers roster, he's going to have all kinds of problems. He needs he needs a really good team. Okay. And I do not see that at all in L.A. All right, so my first thing is, like, what? Belichick's offense stinks right now, and Belichick's not an offensive guy, so why would you bring him here when you've got this Ferrari of Justin Herbert that's just, like, not – you know, living that's that's not capitalizing on just how great Herbert is. Now the defense Belichick, I'm sure, would whip into shape. 
Like Brandon Staley yeah. is supposed to be this great defensive coach. Meanwhile, as the Cowboys are mounting a 14 play drive to set, put themselves in position for the game winning field goal, you know, any one of these third downs, maybe you want to stop the Cowboys on. Well, the Cowboys only had 20 points, but that was mostly the officials more <laughs> than the uh, than the defense. And I also, like going for it on fourth and one, I mean, I, whatever. There were some. Well, McCarthy and Staley, of they course, can't help screwed themselves. up fourth downs all they over the place. They both did. They both screwed up a four and one that I thought. Easy to take the points. Like Chargers fourth, should have taken the points, right? You're fourth and one at the 13 in a game that's clearly not a, blo- a shootout. Like, ha- are you watching the game? I want to know what the coach is. Are you looking down at the play sheet and the analytics? Or are you watching the damn game? Okay. But you always say you got to have one play on fourth and one. So if they may, are you playing the result here? No, because, because if they had scored that drive, it's the they, 13 yard line, kick the point, like kick the field goal. You're in a dog fight. Okay, uh, McCarthy, can you explain the last eight seconds of the first half to anyone who did watch? And that was a malaise. That was bizarre. I, I, we're never going to get those five seconds back <laughs> of our life, guys. Like, that's it. They're gone. Joe Buck has never been more confused on a podcast. <laughs> and if he's confused, what are the rest of us supposed to do about this? So, essentially, uh, they had, was it eight seconds left? They have the ball inside the ten. Was it basically at the 10 yard line? Bogish, would you know what yard this was? This was basically a, a chance with nine seconds to left. To take one shot. To take one shot at the end zone before you would be able to uh, either call a timeout or you throw the ball sort of, you know, where it's either your receiver or it's going out of bounds and they could set up for the field goal. And instead, Mike McCarthy chooses not to call a timeout. Mm-hmm. Seconds are ticking away until it gets five seconds tick off the clock till it gets to the three and three-second mark, and they kick the field goal. Okay, it was 14-yard line. 14-yard line, yeah. okay. But then, then the I just heard the explanation at the start of the third quarter. Buck explained yes. that there was a clock mistake, and they went to McCarthy. And do, said, do you want to stop the clock? Do you want to do you, or do you want to use your timeout and not run 10 seconds off? He said, no, take give me the yeah, 10 seconds. Yeah. And Get it down to three. Goal. Yeah, right. So he could have had eight, like you said, eight seconds with two timeouts to run at least a play. I mean, the fact that Mike McCarthy even had timeouts inside of two minutes is like a minor (laughs) miracle, and then this is what you're going to do with him? I mean, come on. By the way, did you hear the line he goes, why'd you stop the clock? McCarthy said that to the (laughs) official. (laughs) It was uh, was bad. I thought we were setting up for one of those, like, oh, blame Mike McCarthy, and it kind of could have, you know, but they took the the three points. The lesser of two dummies. (laughs) <laughs> Seriously. It was not a coaching clinic last night. But anyway, um, we get to. Yeah. Dak, by the way, I, can we give Dak some flowers? Because everyone's been ripping him all season long. He made some incredible plays with his legs last night. And that if that Dak is around, then the Cowboys have a chance to do anything. If Dak can run, I just wonder, you know, even last night you saw it a little bit. Like, don't you feel like he's an injury risk when he's making all those plays with his legs? Well, also slide. You know, there yeah. was one where he was running for the first yeah. down and just sort of barrel rolled. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you slide there. Yeah. You're almost you're 10 years into your, you know, career. Yeah. I remember when Dak first came in the league, he was really effective running the ball. And rushing touchdowns. Yeah, and oh, he yeah. was unstoppable. But like any quarterback, an older quarterback making plays with his legs always makes me nervous. And Dak has an injury history. So we'll see. But last night he saved them. That play that uh, he kind of got out of a sack and gave the ball to Pollard, yep. broke a tackle, six yards. That changed the game. That was the entire I, I felt like the until that point, I was like, oh, the Cowboys are blowing this game. They're not going to win this game. That so And there's an element of luck to that, too. It was That game easily could have gone either way. That was the longest play for the Cowboys on offense all season long. Yep. There you go. Andrew Bogus is here with some headlines. Good morning. Good morning. All the headlines sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Insurance for motorcycles, boat, and RVs for protection on the road and on the water. See how much you can save at 1-800-PROGRESSIVE and progressive.com. Jerry. They are making it very hard to ignore them. Here's Bryce Harper. The birthday boy, and he swings and lifts it high and deep, and happy birthday, pal! Harper, with a monster drive, deep into right center. It's 2-0 Phillies. 
Harper's fourth of the playoffs. Hit us all with foul ball. Scott Fransky, Phillies radio, Harper adding an RBI single on his 31st birthday, leading his godforsaken team to a 5-3 <laughs> win over the Diamondbacks to start the NLCS. Being 1-0 uh, in a series is huge, and um, we got a big one tomorrow as well, and that's a, that's a good team over there, man. They're not going to lay down, and I um, thought they fought, and I thought we battled as well, so I thought it was a good game one, and uh, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Which is now today, game two starting 8 7 Eastern with Aaron Nola and Merrill Kelly on the mound. Uh, are you going to do the Schwarber home run too? Yeah, dude, it's only 6.30. Uh, <laughs> I love that one. I love, I'm sure you Kyle Schwarber's <laughs> awesome. And me too. Um, he, do you guys ever, when you hear it's somebody's birthday on the broadcast, be like, oh, well, they're going to win probably. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, Bryce Harper, last night on the uh, Monday Night Football game, it was Brian Schottenheimer's 50th birthday. I'm like, what, is Schottenheimer getting the birthday? <laughs> He's like, what, the offensive coordinator now? I don't know. I always... Brian Schottenheimer is only 50. I feel like he's been around for for a long time in the NFL. Has. It's like maybe he shouldn't have had he's those jobs all that long. <laughs> <laughs> he was a little too young for that Jets job. Uh, yeah, Seattle. Anyway, anytime it's someone's birthday, I get nervous. Go ahead. Uh, game two in Houston went to the Rangers just like game one did. Yesterday's 5-4 final makes Texas 7-0 and this postseason. The sixth team ever to do that. They scored four times in the first, added one in the third, and survived three. Astro homers. They are back on the field in Arlington tomorrow. The Cowboys now 10-1 and following a loss over the last two plus seasons. A 2017 win over the Chargers on Monday Night Football. It wasn't easy. It wasn't pretty, but it was a win from Mike McCarthy's team. It was a bumpy game out there. I mean, there's uh, about 20, 21 penalties called. A lot of back and forth. You know, a lot of resetting your jaw and just keep fighting. And um, and I thought our, I, I thought our men did a really good job there. Brandon Aubrey kicked a tie-breaking 39-yard field goal with 2.19 left. The defense then spoiled the Bolts' last drive with a Micah Parsons sack and a Stephon Gilmore pick. Dak Prescott threw for a score, ran for another. His team hits its bye at 4-2 while the Chargers are now 2-3. and three. <laughs> The Niners calling Debo Samuel McCarthy? <laughs> and Trent Williams day-to-day <laughs> after getting hurt Sunday in Cleveland. Christian McCaffrey a little more unsettled. The team's still waiting on test results on his oblique-slash-rib injury. San Francisco plays in Minnesota Monday night. Jim Mersey says rookie QB Anthony Richardson is likely done for the year, likely heading for shoulder surgery, and the Bears confirming a dislocated right thumb for Justin Fields. He is unlikely to play Sunday against the Raiders, but no real timetable for a return. Georgia tight end Brock Bowers had surgery yesterday for Saturday's left ankle injury. He'll likely miss the rest of the regular season. Kansas is number one in the AP men's college basketball preseason poll for the fourth time in program history. Duke, Purdue, Michigan State, and last year's champs from UConn also getting first place votes. And let's do some shootout hockey. The Capitals and Flames in D.C. So Kuznetsov is going to start it off here. And we'll see if he pulls out the move. He sure does. <laughs> going to slow it down along the right side. And just going to tap at it here all the way to the net. Slow it down through the right circle. Tap, 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 and score. It works almost all the time. 60% of the time, it works every time. Very... That doesn't make sense. Uh, John Walton on Caps Radio. Suggestive call there. Right? <laughs> A little bit. I mean, if my mind is perennially in the gutter, but uh, it's like God. he's ready for the move. Mm. And I'm a little slow. slow. Yeah. Now I get it. Okay. <laughs> tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. I was like, why is Bogus playing this clip? Because <laughs> now it's I know. 49 seconds <laughs> of a goal. <laughs> tap, 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 tap it in. It's your immature person. That is why. Come on. Yeah. This is hockey. There's two of us in the room. Old school hockey, yeah. <laughs> we both got it immediately. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, okay. I mean, it's pretty early in the season for a result on the Capitals, <laughs> but okay. <laughs> we need to start like a new segment. This is like sexual hockey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. That's not it. Uh-huh. Uh, last but not least, some bad news for you, Perloff. Uh, we were so excited yesterday about flag football and lacrosse getting yeah. into the 2028 Summer Games in LA, but. If you add events, you got to take some out. And Uh-oh. your beloved breakdancing will not be in L.A. <laughs> in 2028. So enjoy it in Paris your next summer. Your dreams are shattered now. So what is replacing? Did lacrosse make it? Lacrosse, lacrosse, cricket, squash, baseball, softball, flag football. Squash. Squash. 
Does anybody want to watch squash? Um, probably well, you not. could be you could have break dancing going on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna agree with Perloff on this one. Huge miss by the Olympic Committee. Nobody wants to watch squash over break dancing. I know. Where do you even put the camera in a squash court? Also, we have badminton, we've got table tennis, we've got actual tennis, yeah. we've got enough of these squash like yes, thank There's probably you. badminton Although in there pickleball, too. Right? That's coming. Yeah. I wonder if people all over the world are obs- obsessed with pickleball as Americans. I wonder. Yeah, I think America would dominate pickleball. I think, uh, you know, you'd have a middle-aged Brooklynite would be in the Olympics. <laughs> it's the 70 and older division. Maggie was so surprised, the interna- the strength of breakdancing internationally. And I'm not surprised. I, I knew that Europe and Asia had picked up breakdancing and taken the torch. There were no Americans among the contenders. Netherlands, Japan, all over Europe, they're really good at breakdancing. So no wonder well, U.S. got rid of it. What are we doing here? I mean, uh, let's get our it's weight 19, up here, U.S. We, we mastered it in 1987. Listen, if you're the country that produces break and two electric boogaloo, then you've got to win this gold medal every year. Well, yeah, except <laughs> certain people ruined that movie. Oh, really? I haven't seen it. Yeah, I, the, the break in one, with the, the original break in. And then break into the Bugaloo Boys, who are the far right extremist group, took it because uh, oh, they uh, did. they're named after Break Into. Uh, we cannot just have nice things. It's, yeah, these are like over. they're like let's have the American Revolution to the Electric Boogaloo. That was the joke. Oh, my God. <laughs> so they took, they We're took really Breaking scraping Two to the bottom of the barrel here. We can't come up I with a like better I do like the reference slogan. to Breaking Two because when I when I was a young kid, oh man, I had the cut off glove. I was obsessed with break dancing culture. You had the obsessed. So, uh, oh yeah. Uh, I was so bad, like but Jackson I tried. Stuff? Oh, well, yeah. his wasn't a cutoff. I guess his was just like a rhinestone glove. I tried to style myself like uh, Beat Street and uh, Electric Boogaloo. That was yeah. my favorite. Did you movie. have like a jean jacket that was cut off sleeves? Uh, I don't think I ever went there. I was. I wanted to. I just <laughs> knew I couldn't pull that off. But breakdancing was awesome. But now it's been taken over by the world. Oh. It's our gift to the world. I All can't right. believe they're getting rid of but it. Imagine if you knew back then. That you could have been an Olympian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it right. could have changed the entire no, course of your life. I was terrible. It got to That's the point. That's not surprising. Yeah. <laughs> it'd be I like, think a, we need a, bogus it'd be like a sweet 16 and I'm like, you know, I can't make any moves, so I'm just going to just flop like a fish here. Yeah, and that, I'm like, that's breaking. Perloff shows up at the eighth grade dance with a cardboard and is like, what's he going to do here, oh, ladies and do gentlemen? It again. Man, yeah. How long until video games are part of the Olympics? Ooh, e gaming. Should be. Why not? I mean, talk about the world. You know, that's not just a U.S. thing. I don't know. The, actually, uh, video games feel too relevant for the Olympics. Like, <laughs> people might actually want to watch that who are under 57 years old. I don't think that's their demographic at all. Yeah. Uh, it, you do have to be, like, watching a lot of daytime TV to be yeah. into the Olympics. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't think there's a huge crossover between the e-gaming and the Olympic watchers. It's an opportunity. I don't think most of the e-game watchers even have TVs to watch the Olympics on. Aren't they doing three-on-three basketball? I mean, that's... We already did that last time. Yeah. Yeah. How do we do in that one? I think oh, the I women won. won that. The women The men did not win? I don't think so. Kelsey Plum was on the women's team. I'm pretty oh, sure they won, but I don't know about the men. You know what sport I... There's two sports I don't like in the Olympics. Tennis and soccer. Because they have so many international competitions. Nobody cares. Yeah about winning the tennis gold medal, in my opinion. Well, it's cool if you are like a Serena Williams or something. She has a golden slam now on her resume where she won all the grand slams in a calendar year and the gold medal. I mean, that's pretty badass. Is it? No. Does anyone say, oh, here is Serena Williams, the golden slam winner? No, they're like, she has the all-time majors record. (laughs) Well, (laughs) but the golden slam is cool. I think it's totally stupid. If there are, it's a sport that already has international competitions, then why are you doing it in the Olympics? Mm. Soccer, does so anyone basketball's care? out too? Where yeah. does the? I don't know if there are any soccer fans here, but where does the Olympic gold medal count on the soccer list of international events? Well, like tenth. So men's Olympic soccer is like an under twenty five event. It's not oh, a full okay. thing. Women's is a full event, and I and that's pretty significant because they I think they have fewer internet at least up until now they do. So that was probably the number two thing you could okay. do is win Olympic gold after a World Cup. It's a good point though about basketball. Basketball has international stuff too. FIBA. Do you have to win a basketball? Oh, come on. You don't want soccer. F- you don't want the tennis. FIBA wor- the FIBA World Cup is the same thing as the soccer World Cup. Have you seen other countries celebrate FIBA? Like in the United States, we're just like, uh, we're immune to it or something. Right. Or we're just like, what have you done for me lately? Yeah, we said over like Jeremy really- Grant. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah. Luca goes and qualifies. Listen, yeah. Mikel Bridges, like without him, I don't know where the team would be. I am actually, and I'm, 
I, this is, is it un-American to root against LeBron's Olympic team next time? Because yes. I'm just, I, to see LeBron, Curry, and Durant, 36, 37, and 40, I'm just dying to know how this team... Who, who are you rooting for? Dennis Schroeder? Like, what, just, what's your <laughs> options here? I just think that... I think LeBron should pass a torch here. I think he's being a little selfish to come out here and say this. I want this to be all about me and this Olympic run. Like he's 40. He's already won a ton of gold medals. Let some 25 year old do it. Well, the only reason why he's going to do it is because it doesn't intersect with football (laughs) and and his main job of being an NFL analyst. So is that, that was pretty, that was openly anti LeBron there to say that, but don't you think like this is a little ridiculous that Durant, LeBron, and Curry are going to be on this team? We'll see who's actually oh, you're not available buying. when we get to <laughs> lie. summer 2024. It's icy hot ready. Yeah, seriously. Oh, um, uh, man, I can't wait to see them try and slow down Victor Wembanyama. Let's go. Paris, it's on. Bogus, any more sexually suggestive <laughs> hockey highlights not, that you have? Not for, for us? now. All right. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> and we will. 855 2124 CBS. A lot more to get to, including uh, we've got some news for you on the injury front. We'll do that in a minute. Don't move. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remain. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One 
One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Is this, this is from breaking? Right in the sweet spot here. There's no stopping it. Do you guys remember Turbo from the breaking movies? <laughs> of course you don't. You... <laughs> I was just born around this time. What year did Breaking come out? 84? 84, I believe. What year was uh, Breaking 2? I don't remember Breaking. I mean, the plots are a little thin on these movies. <laughs> well, if you didn't see the first one, you're going to be totally lost for the second one. <laughs> yeah. I'm assuming it's Breakdancers Save the World, right? I don't. I never saw them. I just know they exist. I don't know if they saved the world. It's that there's a love story I remember that was really odd. It, you know, basically there was a lot of competition. Who was the better dancer, the yeah. guy or the girl? It was deal. pretty good. Beach Street was, was December '84. What year was Beach Street? That was my movie. As a kid, I'm like, oh my god, this is the <laughs> greatest thing ever. I think LL Cool J was in it. '84. Yep. '84. Yeah. One, one thing they had in the 80s when I was a kid that they just don't have, I don't think, anymore is light-up clothes. Now they have, like, light-up shoes for kids. Mm. But you remember, like, I had clothes that lit up. Like, it almost looked like Night Rider, you know? Like the, I know the shoes. I, yeah. I don't know the... I've never seen the clothes. That had, sounds amazing. I had, like, light-up shirt. It was. It looked like the license plate, like the front of the car... Not the license plate, the front of the car from Night Rider. <laughs> did it have batteries? Yeah, it did. Oh, wow. Where would the battery go? <laughs> you would have to take it out. I guess you must have only had to hand wash it. That would not be a machine wash situation. But yeah, it had like a little battery on the side, like wires and a little battery. I'll try to find it. Anyway, you put up a poll yeah. on your own Twitter feed where you try to skew the what? results in your own No, 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 direction. but this one went against me. Oh. So the question was, I, I think the Cowboys would be favored by a field goal against the Lions in the playoffs. Yeah, we were talking about, I, I think that the Lions have over, despite the Cowboys' big win last night on the road against the Chargers, I think the Lions have now replaced the Cowboys yeah. in terms of the teams we think about as elite in the NFC. San Francisco, Philadelphia, and I think Detroit is there, and the, the Cowboys are one step below. So, did, But my argument would be Detroit has been nothing but teams that are going to be in the top eight of the draft. Okay. I mean, they've been terrible teams. And Dallas was yeah. stacking the I box know. against the Giants and the yeah, Jets. That's you fair know. point. Uh, if they play in the playoffs, who do you like, Lions or Cowboys? Try and guess the results. Well, I mean, there's just more Cowboy fans out there, but I feel like the Lions fans are a little more, you know, they're feeling themselves now. Yeah. They deserve to be. 91% Detroit Lions. <laughs> what is going on here? That's First of that's all, Dan I, Campbell fever, baby. I'm well, telling you right now, thought. if they play in the playoffs, the Cowboys are going to be favored. Just because a public will bet on the Cowboys. Yeah. But also, too, like Jared Goff, he's not getting away from Micah Parsons. It's going to be kind of like Herbert last night. I think he's going to be a sitting duck back there. And I know the Lions have been really good against these bad teams. I think that Cowboys front line is a different animal. Okay, but here's the, th here's the thing about Detroit that would make me uh, optimistic yeah. about them. Number one, their offensive line is really good yep. because they've been quietly stacking like off awesome offensive linemen you know, through their draft picks. Two, their run game is awesome. They were facing the Bucs on Sunday, which is a really good run defense. They lose David Montgomery. They don't even have Jameer Gibbs, and they were still able to run at will mm. against the Bucs. The Bucs are terrible. The Bucks stink. But their They're run defense is games. not bad. I, I don't know. And They're, everyone was feeling Baker after the first couple games of the season. So that you got that going for you. And then the thing about the defense of side of, of the Lions, which I like, is they're able to get home right now without blitzing. Like, they barely blitz. I was looking this up last night for something we're going to do later on about the Lions. And 
they're not a big blitzing defense, and they're still able to come up with lots of pressures, lots of hurries, lots of sacks. Yeah, it's, but they, again, show me a defense they played that's like Dallas. Dallas got to how many times did they get to Herbert last night? Uh, I think they, they it, at least mo- ten. That was the most hurries that uh, and most pressures. Part of me that Herbert has faced this season. They were hurrying him on forty six percent of the plays. Yeah, and the Chargers usually uh, have an okay offensive line. So anyway, this is getting ahead of myself. Usually the Cowboys lose to the Niners, not the Lions. That's why I feel Aww. like it's a movie that repeats itself. Just let them play. It's going to be great this year. It's going to come down to a Mike McCarthy call in Santa Clara. Uh, it's, it's happening, Maggie. Uh, I'd like to see now Dallas and the Lions. I mean, I, I, this is the thing about Dallas. They can't beat the 49ers. Can we get a different matchup? Yeah, a Maybe there's point. something a little bit more interesting. Uh, I'm sure the 49er fans would not agree with that. They want to see Dallas, of course. Uh, more chatter about Bill Belichick yeah. and whether or not he would be the right head coach for the L.A. Chargers. Um, in the chat, they're finding it hard to believe that Belichick would be able to have a tan living in uh-huh. L.A. I mean, he is a big boat guy. But, listen, here's the thing that Belichick gives you. I know that it's bad, and the end of this era in New England is looking really disappointing. However, Belichick, I think, still needs to give get credit as a culture guy, someone who gets buy-in from the players. They're still playing hard, even though the Patriots stink right now. You still have a lot of buy-in. I know that's a low bar because they're professional athletes. Yeah. But, I mean, he, compared to Brandon Staley, he's going to be such a, a huge upgrade. The question is, who would he bring with him as an offensive coordinator, yeah. and can that person do their job effectively? If the Chargers hire a defensive coach, I know Belichick was a special team guy, and it's defense, I, I think the Chargers fans, all seven of them, should totally revolt. <laughs> they they better bring in an offensive guru next year. Enough of this Brandon Staley. Just it's Belichick, you, though. That's would, not even one way, of the mill. It's not Matt Eberflus and Brandon Staley. It's it a different matter. animal. It doesn't matter. You need an offensive coach because you bring in, I mean, this has been said a lot. The trend is obviously offensive coaches. You bring in any kind of defensive-oriented coach and you have a studded quarterback, you are subtly undermining the offense because you're going to make decisions that are conservative. Do not bring in Belichick. You need to bring in some 38-year-old coordinator. And not a defensive coordinator. That was the problem with Brandon Staley. He's the wrong side of the ball. They should have gotten whoever the offensive coordinator was at the time for the Rams. And I'm sure that, you know, I, they're going to probably make a call to Lincoln Riley. They need an offensive guru to make things easier there. They need to bring in a lot of youth to that offense. Yeah, it's not, uh, I think it's that not they for need lack to of being aggressive, up. though. I mean, Brandon Staley at times is way too aggressive, right? Like, that's some of the problem about, you know, just take points when they're available for you as opposed to going for it at all times. Now but, he's been a little more up and down with that those decisions. But do you feel like there's an offensive flow there? Like, did it, does it look anything like a Sean McVay offense or a Kyle Shanahan offense? Well, definitely not. I know Kellen Moore is a good offensive coordinator, but I just think the whole team is they're kind of built for a certain style that isn't working at all. Yeah, I mean, I think that's all that's on Kellen Moore because that's the thing. You have this sort of you got this a lot of potential here with Justin Herbert and I thought he did deserve criticism yesterday. He missed a couple big throws to Keenan Allen in early in the game that could have been explosives and also that final drive. Like you got two and a half minutes, you got timeout, you gotta be better. Well now, how do you explain Austin to Dallas Eck- defense? How do you explain Austin Eckler fourteen carries for twenty seven yards? That's not on the coordinator? I mean he's coming off of an injury. Like I I don't know. Is that's there- one point eight yards per carry. <laughs> Listen, I so think why are you going to him fourteen times? Well, because I in a close game, I kinda understand having to still try to have the threat of the run game. Yeah, but maybe be like Mike McDaniel, have a creative run game or do something to make it a little bit easier. That's terrible. It is terrible. I totally agree with you, but they're not fast right now. And that's the thing about McDaniel is he's got this crazy speed with all of his offensive weapons. And yes, the Chargers are not fast, but to your point, are they playing up to their strengths? It's not like they have no strengths and it doesn't feel like they're playing up to them. You know, last year, and I said this a lot, I couldn't believe how slow the Chargers' weapons got at the end of the season. Like, Herbert has no chance because nobody's separating from anybody. There was a couple plays where they somehow schemed Keenan Allen open last night, but how many throws does does Justin Herbert put in a window that's three inches wide? Because the wide receivers are not open. There's no speed there on this team. Okay, there's no speed. You're right. There is injuries a lot. Now, they tried to address it with Quentin Johnston. You just are he's not a, he's seeing a rookie. A lot. He was a 22nd pick. He's not going to come in and fix everything. I don't know. Zay Flowers is a rookie. Yeah, and he's, he's doing some that's nice That's the guy things. they should have gotten because he's fast. Quentin Johnston is fast, but he's a more of a big guy. A lot more to do. 855 212 4CBS, 855 212 4227. 
including, oh boy, one big injury, the impact, the ripple effect, all of that next. Don't move. You're in a five minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Three 
15 seconds. Break ends in five seconds. was the Heisman Trophy winner in 1986. He left her off the ballot. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. We are a very talented morning show. Hey, welcome in Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. So glad to have you reacting to a big Dallas win. I mean, they t- they said, Perloff, this was a must win for them. That's mm. not the media throwing that kind of stuff around. That was the Cowboys themselves. Easy to say after a win. But considering how bad it looked against San Francisco, how bad it has looked against San Francisco, losing to the Chargers on the road would have been a sky is falling situation for Dallas. Instead, they pull out the victory in what was a very slog like game. Tons of penalties, but ultimately Dallas and Dak Prescott made the plays when it mattered. Yeah, I was impressed with Dak Prescott yesterday. Obviously, the Niners game was as bad as you can get the whole team. I think when Dak decides, I'm going to use my legs, and he's been saying this a lot. If you follow him this season, he said, I'm going to use my legs in the red zone. That happened last night. He got out of a lot of sacks. I think the Chargers are lamenting those missed sacks big time. Yep. Uh, and the key thing, he found Brandon Cooks for a touchdown finally, somebody besides C.D. Lamb. The problem with this Cowboys team has been C.D. Lamb's the only reliable target for a long time. I mean, Cooks was not awesome all game, but I think they need to spread the ball out a little more. And You saw Pollard play well last night. So finally, a little more variety in that offense. And a little bit of an exhale and some breathing room here for the Cowboys who go into their bye week. On the flip side, another primetime game for Justin Herbert. Another opportunity he has to really show everyone, hey, like I'm not just a stats guy. I'm like a win the game guy. And Dallas's defense had other plans really got all over him in that final drive where Micah Parsons comes up with a massive sack. And then on third down, Justin Herbert throws an interception to Stephon Gilmore. And that was all she wrote. And so for people like us who watch this and really get invested in all of these quarterbacks, you know, wanted to see Justin Herbert really step up and win a game because he has so much talent. It just leaves you wanting more with a guy who's just like got all the skills, all the tools. Not me. I want to see him with a new coach. Well, I'd rather they go four and thirteen, fire Brandon Staley, and bring in an offensive guru as a head coach. I, 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 I do not put this on Herbert. We totally disagree on this one. Yeah, it's another again, another primetime game. Herbert comes up small. Um, the question is: Is Bill Belichick the right guy to turn things around for the LA Chargers? Got to pull up right now at Maggie and Pearl on the Twitter. Do we have to start calling it X? I can't do that. Uh, is Belichick? Should they hire Belichick? If things keep trending the way they're trending in both New England and in L.A., would that be a perfect match? Perloff says no. I think yes. Let's go to John in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Good morning, John. Hey, good morning, Maggie. Good morning, Perloff. Thanks for having me. Hey, buddy. Hey, I'm so glad you guys are in the morning. I listen to you in the afternoon, but ha- happy to move over on the drive into work instead. But, uh, yeah, th- this is really inter- interesting. Um, you know, with, with Bill. Are, are we really giving him enough credit there, Perloff? Um, I, I think he's still got some moxie trying to make moves. Uh, I, you know, feel free to knock him on some of the, the GM decisions, but as a head coach running the system with, with his sort of guys, he signed Malik Cunningham to a three-year deal right off the practice squad. <laughs> like, I, I don't know what's going on over there, and I didn't know what you guys thought. I yeah. love Malik Cunningham, by the way. I'm so excited about that. But John, here's thank the thing. You for the phone call. Belichick's not, even his special teams are terrible this year. It's really bad. That's the most shocking part, that, Bill Belichick's special teams are one of the worst in the league and making terrible mistakes. I just think the Chargers need a fully offensive guy. You can't go from Brandon Staley, a defensive coordinator, to sort of an old school coach. You need to bring in whoever the Rams offensive coordinator is now. Just bring, I think it's Zach Robinson, right? Or he might still be there. Bring him over and just start over. Or what about like the Lions offensive coordinator? Yeah, yeah. He, he oh, has, if you get that's the guy too. If you can get Johnson or it's Johnson, right? Ben, was, ben Johnson, yeah, ben I Johnson. think. But here's the thing: like, don't you want? I mean, I, I think back to some of the more the Chargers' more successful times. You know, with like uh, Marty Schottenheimer. You know, like someone who has a little gravitas, somebody yeah, but, who do who actually has some skin in the game here, as opposed to a coordinator. You have no idea how they're going to be 
when they get to the big seat. Oh my gosh. You could, if you bring Marty Schottenheimer type back, may he rest in peace. I mean, that's exactly the guy they do not want. They have Justin Herbert. They cannot be the same team they were with Philip Rivers. They need a need someone to make the team exciting. Marty Schottenheimer made the team slow and not capable of winning in the playoffs. They need a Sean McVay type, someone to bring excitement to this team. That's what's lacking. There's there's no pizzazz with them. There's no there's no offensive plays. You're like, oh wow, what a call. I just am not seeing it. I guess like the the one thing, though, about Sean McVay, it's like, yeah, everybody wants that, but it's not that easy, you know? It's not yep. that easy to find, and again, it's not like every... Listen, you get a McVay and, and Shanahan, and you get McDaniels, and you got Zach Taylor out there, and you've got, you know, uh, Kevin O'Connell, but you're not sure that just the next guy up is automatically going to be great. But if you have a great quarterback, it feels like you want to bring in a Shanahan, McVay, Andy Reid type. You do not want to bring in, a, you know old codger like I'm Bill saying, Belichick. I'm, that's that's my opinion. But the thing is the, the the irony is that the Shanahan thing is all about and Mike McDaniel is actually more about the run game. I know that yeah, Tua is having an all time awesome season and you know Tua could be the front runner for MVP look statistically he's you know blowing everyone away kinda but I don't know. You gotta have a better run game there. I don't know if just getting a McVay disciple is gonna be enough. I think you having somebody who's got the stature of a Belichick I think could go a long way with that organization. Oh man, I mean, get a little more out of Joey Bosa. The know? Patriots have all have Bill Belichick there with that stature. What are they doing this year? That's so good. Here's the thing about that. So I feel like this this is what I'm a little nervous about. Not nervous, but I think it would be a disservice to Belichick. Brady has already won the debate, right? We know that he deserves a lot of credit, maybe more of it, for what was going on with the dynasty in uh, in New England. However. Let's not let one and a half bad seasons at the very end of a marriage that's lasted for two decades cloud everything that Belichick has done. Like he doesn't, this doesn't mean he's a bad coach, washed, nothing like that. And I wouldn't be surprised if he does get a little resurgence if he goes to a new team. I, I don't see it. it I mean, when does that happen historically? I guess Dick Vermeil had a late run. There's a few of them, but it, isn't it rare? Uh, Vince Lombardi, did he even coach after the Packers? He, he, I know he was with Washington. I, I just see, like, what's the formula here where a guy who had all the success then after how many years there, 20 years, goes to a next team and well, rebuilds Well, Parcells was still successful at, but he de jumped at different year year. stops. Yeah, but how old was he when he jumped from the Giants? He was probably, he was way younger in his coaching career. I I think this is more like Tom Landry where he's just sort of going to fade out a little bit. And I, I think Bill Belichick should go to the NFL Network and just... Be like, this is great. He loves talking about NFL history. Uh, I don't think he should try another team, especially the Chargers, a stake bitten franchise like that. I'm sorry, you know the Chargers are always Charger. Oh, this is I get not it. just Brandon Staley. They've been chargering for decades. I know, but maybe Bel maybe you need something like the force of uh, Belichick. Just, What's Ben Johnson gonna do to overcome, you know, decades of chargering? Like an offensive coordinator, a young guy, that they, they could be a sitting duck in that kind of uh with those vibes. How about uh okay, I'll give you a guy. How about Harbaugh? little intensity. Uh, the Jim yeah, Harbaugh yeah, I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Harbaugh would be a, sh a short-term fix, though. He's likely oh, only going to be... Compared to Well, yeah. I know Belichick's 72. Why would, why, why would Harbaugh be a short-term fix? <laughs> it feels like he is at a place for usually... Well, now he's been in Michigan for a while, but it's like about five years, right? Yeah, but still, and then I he think sort of burns that's out. what we're talking about with Herbert. I think you need yeah, a five-year window. I, I would actually... If you gave me... Whoever the hottest young offensive assistant is, give me that guy. I think that's a, that's who I would hire. I would hire somebody in their 30s who's, quote-unquote, a guru. Um, yeah, I, I think that this team needs like just a whole like a lightning bolt of youth oh, and wow. energy. Look at you. Yes. Wait, you were waiting on that one. No. Yeah. I, I just you, think you I were setting them. it up from two minutes ago that you were going to hit lightning bolt there. They were so stale last night. Like that, yeah. The whole game was stale. Maybe it wasn't their fault. But did you watch that game and say, oh, I've seen this Chargers game before? It feels like the same thing. Just rinse and repeat. 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. Let's hit Mario. He's in Vancouver. Mario, my call screen is not working. Mario, good doing? morning. How you doing? Good morning. How you doing? Hey, I don't understand. None of the guy, that, your, your partner there you're talking to, he must just, not like Bill Belichick too much, because why wouldn't you want a quarter a head coach who's a defensive coordinator, guru at that, and he hires an offensive coordinator? Because the guy's won seven Super Bowls. Why wouldn't you want that guy? Yeah. Just because. Six, but yeah. Two, well, two with the Giants. 
He was an offensive coordinator. A defense coordinator. Yeah. Yeah, he won two with the Giants. Yeah, and then six with so the that means That means he's won eight Super Bowls. There you go. Bill Belichick's style is so conservative, though. Is that really who you want to pair with Justin Herbert? I mean, he had a game well, two years ago where he threw four passes in the entire game in the win against Maggie's Buffalo Bills. Okay, but that was yeah, also well, you were playing the weather. That was the brilliant. Win. They but won no. that game. But it, w- was it working for him, running the ball? Well, here's the other thing. Not anymore. It, not in today's NFL. It wasn't a conservative offense when it was Tom Brady to Randy Moss. I mean, you, you, when you have a great quarterback yeah. like Bill Belichick, since Brady has left, it's been Cam Newton and Mac. End of the road, Cam Newton and I Mac Jones. A good quarterback and Bailey Zappi. Give him, put him with but, a good quarterback and get a, you know, some, some and update no the receiving core. Team. And no I in team. Thank you, Mario. All, he always gets in. The, <laughs> you know, he'll get. He's got a better chance to get in the Chargers to the promised land than any other coach that's out there right now. Because look at the guy in Seattle. He's he's an old guy too. What's his name? Well, oh, here's Pete the Carroll? thing, Mario. In all seriousness, yeah, doesn't Belichick need to bring in Bill Belichick type players, guys who are all about like he needs to gut that roster and bring in new guys? Like, how long is that going to take? He's seventy one years old. So, because you have the quarterback, you're ahead of schedule. So you got the quarterback. You've got a couple pieces on defense that you know. Listen, Khalil Mack can obviously still get his I mean, in, in the right moment. Joey Bosa is supposed to be and is being paid like an all pro. I mean, you still have some bones here on this team. And the fact that you have the quarterback, it just really puts you ahead of the sticks. Joey Bosa always gets hurt. He's amazing. Uh, that's the other thing. All the Chargers get hurt. I, I hope they do hire him because then I will show you and Mario that it's not going to work. <laughs> because there's also there's a stickiness to this franchise. Like they can't seem to change. You say that uh, Belichick will change the culture and make it better. I think there's deeper personnel problems, too. So you're coming from a flawed personnel situ- situation in New England. I think the Chargers have a flawed personnel situation. They never should have gotten Mac, by the way. They need to, listen, they need to rip the Band-Aid off and go young and build team speed and be dynamic. This team is not working for me right now, and I don't think Belichick could save it. Hire it. Hire the next Sean McVay, Maggie. It's just simple. Just get the next Sean McVay. <laughs> yeah, Perloff, Why can't you do that for me? This would be like Perloff having a consulting company, yeah. you know, and they bring Here's him in. Here's what you want to like, do. All right. Here's Can what you, you diagnose do. what's going on in our franchise? Like, here you go. we got to find anyone who had a cup of coffee with Sean McVay and hire him. You see uh, what Kyle Shanahan's doing in San Francisco? That's what you yeah. want. You want <laughs> that, that on offense. Yeah. And defense, you know. <laughs> yeah, actually, defense. I feel like uh, Shanahan's lucked into that defense because <laughs> historically he hasn't been that great at it. I love that. Is that funny that you're right? Kyle Shanahan is this offensive guru and is winning games with defense. The defense is amazing. And all their defensive coordinators are ones better than the next. It's like Robert Sala leaves and then D'Amico Ryans. D'Amico Ryans even better than Sala. Now you got uh, Steve Wilkes is there. They look amazing. Like, yeah, when you have great personnel. John Lynch uh, pulling the, the personnel moves there. Obviously, he knows a thing or two. Yeah, when you have Fred Warner and Nick Bosa, of course. They spent on Javon Hargrave, though. That was a big one for yeah. your Eagles. Oh, no, He's they made good. great moves on defense. I mean, they did draft Trey Lance at three. That's the one yeah. glaring mistake for that front office. Funga is great. Oh, yeah, fifth round. Oh, they all. I think a lot of that is because Bosa causes so many problems for the. Uh, yeah, Bosa, we didn't pay, pay so much attention to Nick Bosa that it makes it everything easier. And Fred Warner. That's two Hall of Famers for sure. Yeah, Shanahan's... It, another thing that helps, by the way, if I'm starting this football team consulting thing... Yeah, have Pearl, seven Pearl or eight, off Industries. Yeah, have seven or eight Hall of Famers. <laughs> I would suggest that. You know, have the best left tackle in the league in Trent Williams. That's good. Have three or four amazing wide receivers, the best running back in McCaffrey. That's, you know, it's simple. And then you Easy. just send him a bill for 20 grand. 855 <laughs> for CBS. You're welcome, Chargers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You might want to draft Caleb Williams if that's possible. <laughs> <laughs> I think the quarterback's the one thing they don't oh, yeah, have they, a problem right, right. with. No, no, I'm just thinking my, I'm expanding out to all 32 teams uh, here. Oh, yeah. That's your dynamite plan. You need a PowerPoint for that. You know, our buddy Thomas Dimitrov, former Falcons GM, has yeah. a Sumer Sports where they're doing an analytical look of how to build a champion. Yeah, he's explained it four times. I still have no clue what they do. Yeah, I, I, I think they're a consulting company, exactly what you're talking about. I think this exists. I, they're a very young company. I'm dying to know what they would say to the Chargers. Like, what do you need to do? Do you bring in Bill Belichick to change the culture? Is it a personnel situation? Because there is something about the Chargers. Like, they just can't get over this hump. I mean, you, if Thomas Dimitrov was smart, he'd be like, well, you should hire me. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what consultants do, right? They get in the door, fire everybody, and be like, well, I'll be vice president. 
I was never. Okay, I'll do it. Did you guys have friends who became consultants after college? No. I just, I, I'm i not exactly sure what they do. I have no idea. I don't get it. Like McK- McKenzie? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know they fire people. They come in, they, they come fire in, they people. fire people. They work long hours, and I have no idea what they do. I don't really understand the entire financial industry, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I have, you're too to admit in. that now. Yeah. Do you? Not I, really. Okay. I watched The Big Short like three times. It was like, eh guess i kind of get it on the third time yeah are you guys financial wizards on the other side of the glass oh, we work in radio day traders <laughs> okay <know>. good <laughs> i feel like if we were into finance well we'd just be in finance yeah. be in radio <laughs> although all the finance bros want to work in sports it's uh, ironic i know one person that's into the consulting and uh, let's just say uh their wedding was in the hamptons oh nice <laughs> stealing money <laughs> yes maybe that's our i always thought this would be a great job for me or me and you or people who work in sports. I want to create a consulting firm for politicians who always botch these sports references. Like mm, it's, sports that's a good is one. the easy layup for politicians, right? It's like it's so yeah. easy to get people on your side and they just make dumb mistakes when it comes to sports. I want to be a, a, a sports consultant for a politician. Absolutely. Yeah. Remember that woman in Massachusetts who lost an election because she said Kurt Schilling was a Yankee? Mar- <laughs> Martha Coakley. It can really affect your campaign. Yeah, uh, th- this is a huge issue. Uh, how about when <laughs> it's a huge issue. The, P- the PED trials at Congress? We used to play the Sound of Dan Patrick show all the time. Uh, the who is the guy for the Mets? The PED supplier, the Kirk steroid. Radomsky? The other oh, one. Oh, Brian McNamee? McNamee. They yeah. said, Mr. McNamee. And then they, <laughs> they couldn't say any. Uh, yeah, I'll find this clip. We used to play it. Uh, they butchered Rafael Palmeiro's name so badly. You're right. Congress has no idea. They're just, they're, they're, they're killing themselves over yeah. this. People are worried about the fact that there's no speaker. They should really be worried about the fact they can't pronounce his name. Right? <laughs> also, it's just like, you got to be able to take the layoffs here. Call me in. I'll charge you 10 grand an hour. No, that's a little high. Five. Eight five five two one two four CBS eight five five two one two four. It's a little low twenty. <laughs> See, Pete, I need you as my financial person. That's Clearly, right. I don't know what I'm doing. That's I'm right. negotiating against myself. That's why I'm. That's why I'm still here. Right? <laughs> Not in the financial world. <laughs> we need you here more than they need you there. That is true. Uh, Coming up. Uh, yes. By the way, I, uh, we already got an email. There's somebody who wants our, your representation. <laughs> His name is George Santos. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't. I can't just make up a team. They have to be real team. You can tell that guy anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, the Chicago Bears have had the best quarterbacks ever. <laughs> he could be like, he'd get up in a speech and it's like, well, when the Chargers won the Super Bowl last year. <laughs> Man, guys, I got to go. I got to go. I got to take the rest of the show off so I can start yeah. my website. Look at us getting all political here on the Maggie and Perloff show. <laughs> These are layups. <laughs> We'll talk about Israel next. I'm just kidding. 855-212-4CBS. Just kidding. 855-212-4227. No, we talk football around here. Uh, Coming up, one college football coach defending his record. Should he? Should he have to? We'll get to that in a moment. Plus headlines with Andrew Bogus. Don't move. It's Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. minutes 30 seconds remaining (laughs) 
three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. All right, Maggie. Welcome back to Maggie and Perloff. I have an issue with the way the Cowboys are sort of presenting last night's win over the Chargers. Okay. So let me get this straight. A week six game against an out-of-conference team, the L.A. Chargers, is a must-win game. That's what they said. Yeah, so if that's a must-win game, then what's not a must-win game? This is, they were talking about this a lot in the pregame. Like, every Cowboys game becomes this gigantic referendum on the entire country. Like, you get so much laser focus on every game Dak Prescott has. Yeah. I think everyone's got to relax about the Cowboys. They over probably overreacted a little bit to the 42-10 loss to the Niners. That game just started going downhill against them. It was in San Francisco. And every game can't be a must-win. Must-win for them is a divisional game. They play the Eagles in a couple <laughs> well, weeks. That's yes. a must-win well, game. that's a winner go week, home. Week six yeah. against the L.A. Chargers is not a must-win game. Okay, I think what they were talking about is... Because your Eagles and the 49ers both lost on Sunday, this was like a must win to keep their hopes alive that they could win the NFC. I don't listen, the Lions are probably going to win the NFC, so we can talk about that or the 49ers, but to keep pace in the NFC East, to keep the whole, the dream alive, they'll have a home playoff game. Yeah. What, what does our buddy Dave Damashek say about must win? Like, he'll, he'll, well, that's his classic line at the Super Bowl. Yeah, this is a real <laughs> must-win must game. Yeah, he goes around at media day at the Super Bowl and says, do you consider this a must-win game? <laughs> that's a must-win game. Game seven of a playoff series, that's yeah. a must-win game. Week six against the Chargers in L.A. is not a must-win game because if the Cowboys have lost this game, listen, there's still a lot of season left. 
They just got to stay healthy because they have a defense that's going to get them to the playoffs. The it defense, doesn't even matter what Dak does. Yeah, the defense was great. The Stars were the ones that clinched it last night with Michael Parsons with a big sack and Stephon Gilmore with an interception. But they got pressure on Herbert all last night. I mean, yeah. they were making him uncomfortable. But, Perlov, I can't believe you worked in sports media this long and you have such a narrow view of what a must-win game is. You, a, there's a no. wide latitude of must-wins. I understand what the Cowboys were talking about here. You don't want to be 3-3 three and three with the Why? likes of the Commanders and the Atlanta Falcons and the Saints and the yeah, yeah. Seahawks and the Rams. Like You've got to show that you're better than that. You're not a 3-3 three and three with the rest of the pack. You're a 4-2. and two. That's solid. No, because they're th- this is oh, this is such classic sports media. It's they're not, three and is, three, and they're the about Cowboys to go on. Said it. They're about to go. Yes, the Cowboys are idiots. They're about to go on a seven game <laughs> run. People overreact so much week to week with this team, especially. But no, even we if, they were three, if they were three and three, they are easily going to win at least six of their next eight games. They're definitely going to go on a huge run here because their competition stakes. You saw them against the Giants. Do you think the Giants are going to beat that Cowboys team? Listen, they called it a must win. I'm more than happy to go along with that. Yeah, EJ, <laughs> you look like you want to say something. Yeah, I know. I, I think Perloff, there is a concept beyond just the standings as and the schedule in terms right. of a must win. To me, this was about their mentality. I yeah. mean, they got punked oh, when they went on. up to they got punked when they went up to uh, Northern California to play against the 49ers in Santa Clara. Like this was about hey, if you what kind of team are we? Are yeah. we a team that yeah. gets pushed around when we play against other talented teams like people keep saying we are? Or can we go against a team on the road in a primetime game and show that we can actually go and punch back? I think for them, mentality-wise, that's what they were saying when they said it was a must-win. They went back to the sofa and got slammed last night. I mean, We'd be right in their obituary. Yeah, and I think, and I, and I well, think they may end up bleeding. And you'd be very wrong. Well, we might be wrong, but we would have had you, a reason. I would not be right in their obituary. No way. Well, three and three and about to play the weakest schedule in the NFC. They're about to go on a run. They're Don't, going to the Eagles in two weeks. They What's got the, the Rams. They're going to the Rams who are not good. Then they go to at the Eagles. Then they got the Giants, the Panthers, Washington, Seattle at home, the Eagles. I mean, they, they're going to win a bunch of these games. First of all, the Rams are not. They're not, they're not bad. Okay, they're, they're not, three and three right now. They're not great. No, they're not great, but they're better than anyone thought. They're going to put up a fight. Oh, they're going to destroy Matthew Stafford. Not Here's maybe, the thing. But. When it's a divisional round and they are headed to San Francisco, is anyone going to look back and say, man, that really rallied us, that 20-17 to 17 flag fest in week six in L.A., <laughs> a team that they, basically they're playing in front of a Cowboys crowd, and this but is an out-of-conference game. It's just like the Eagles lost. Everyone was overreacting. Out of conference losses don't really mean anything. But the teams are living week to week. I think yeah. like you like well, not- they should be. No, why are they living week to week? It's a seventeen game schedule. Yeah, but you know that people call the NFL a week to week league. Right. You're aware that fans this- do, but players don't. They look I at think- it as a long season. Uh-oh. No, I think I- players do. They have to get narrowly focused in on the task at hand. If you start thinking ahead, that's how you get trap games. That's how you lose focus. That's how you lose sight of the prize. You have to be dialed in on week to week. But don't you think there's a tendency to overrate every single game in the NFL as a referendum? on what that team is? I mean, I don't find that to be a problem. I find that to be, uh, it's I, not I, it, it, It's what? not like the disease, it's the symptom I think of what a, the league is. It's like, it, this is just how it goes when you play one game a week. We do it with college, yeah. we do it with the NFL. I think it's a big problem because I think you make a lot of analysis mistakes. Not you, I'm saying in general. No, I, think I people, make none. I, I think mean, people, I'm flawless. <laughs> Dallas I mean, yeah. Cowboys facing the Jacksonville Jaguars in the Super Bowl. Let's go. I, I think people no play. see a game like they see the San Francisco game against Cleveland. I think you'd be making a huge mistake and saying, oh my gosh, we saw all the flaws with the Niners there in that game. Okay, but, and then you're like, uh, and then the Niners are going to turn around and kill a bunch of guys. You're like, oh, you're going to make a okay. mistake and you're now analysis if you overrate one game okay of but here's here was the analysis coming out of the 49er game it wasn't wow the 49ers suck now yeah. nobody said that not one per find me anyone who you actually care about but people said, said that. purdy's out of the mvp race okay was purdy ever actually in it would have been another <laughs> flaw of the analysis fourth and odds okay <laughs> okay but did he did he actually deserve to be in the mvp race is something we could go back and just argue the premise and then the other part is The analysis coming out was, if Christian McCaffrey and Debo are hurt, what does this offense look like? How is it different? And is Purdy going to be as effective missing those two weapons? That's not an overreaction. It's not just being week to week. Okay. It was pouring in the second quarter. Well, let's see. He went we, back to pass the ball. He had an open guy quarters. 10 yards in front of him, and the ball went backwards okay, because it slipped this? out of his hand. Well, let's see because we have injury updates, and Bogus is here. I'm sure we're going to get to that. Let's see with Christian McCaffrey getting yeah. an MRI. Debo's day-to-day, so that's encouraging. Um, they needed to pull up. They needed 
to be dry. If they could got a fourteen nothing lead when it was dry, then they could have won that game. But it just started raining too quickly when they were driving the ball. Okay, and Pro trust me, Brock Purdy. Football. They play Brock Purdy's in the rain. Not play, he's not playing in the rain again. This there's no game. <laughs> what where are you, the meteorologist? I'm what just are saying, you like, God? <laughs> How do you know he's not going to play in the rain again? He plays in San Francisco. It's not going to rain in, in in California. It never rains in San Francisco. What if they have to go on the road? Does it rain in Philadelphia? He might have one road game where it rains. Uh, I mean, listen, is the Super Bowl ever going to be played in the rain again? Are they going to make it to the Super Bowl if he can't play yes. in the rain? No, I mean, the odds of him playing a rain game are, are slim because he's a 49ers quarterback. He's not in, in Lambeau. This is the ultimate excuse making for this guy. Like, that you think the. Like, See, that's that, exactly this. That's the other point. I think you're misinterpreting Black Purdy because if you think like the rain game is indicative of who he is, then that's a mistake because okay. that's not who he is. Okay, but if you think that you can actually win at some point, you're going to be hit with adversity where your quarterback's going to have to win under circumstances mm. that are not perfect. And you're someone who loves this. I say I want domes on every stadium. You're somebody who yeah. wants them to play in the elements. At some point, you're going to have to go to, maybe not this year, but at some point, you're going to have to go to Lambeau. At some point, yeah. you're going to have to be in a bad weather game. Like, that's part of the job description. It, it, it also wasn't raining in the second half when they had 21 yards of offense until the last drive. The second quarter was bad weather, not the whole game. It was still super wet. It was really windy, too. And you saw it on the field goal attempt. It was really windy, yeah. is what everyone said. But I mean, I, wind is a killer for quarterbacks. But honestly, if San Francisco gets home field, they're not playing. He's not playing in a weather game in the playoffs. I don't know. There's you don't no know. Chance. It could rain in San Francisco. I mean, and they just happens. lost a game that might make them have to play in Philadelphia instead of hosting the NFC Championship game. I can, it, listen, it, it might go through Detroit. That's a good chance. It's not it's going possible. through Philly. Also, Brock Purdy yeah, played Detroit, Iowa State. Detroit. There's bad weather there. It's not like he was sitting around playing it, you know. Detroit's North very Carolina much indoors, by the way. I want to point out that it's not cold. <laughs> What's I, that? I, 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 oh, can we do a massive show bet that Brock Purdy does not play in a rain playoff game? Because Detroit's what? indoors, guys. What it's either a San Farmer's Fr Almanac? Like, <laughs> well, I'm just looking at the tell? schedule. The Super Bowl's in Vegas. The conference title game is either going to be in San Francisco, Detroit, or Dallas. Uh, okay, let's just go with like recent. And I know this is we're on all over the country, but we just had a situation here in New York where they told us that it was going to be light rain like two weeks ago, and the entire borough of Brooklyn ended up underwater and flooded. Basically, one guarantee I will have: there is not going to be a conference title game in New York this year, next year. No, I'm or, saying you can't. No, no, no. I'm yeah. saying you can't predict the weather. That's the whole part of it. But I mean, the you point is know. like you're the Niners' quarterback. I mean, it's not going to be pouring rain in San Francisco and in. in January. That's just not going to happen. That never happens. My in-laws are out there. Trust me, it's beautiful that time of year. <laughs> okay, Jim Cantor. Yeah, I know. <laughs> what are you guys talking about? Well, you how know that the, you, you guys are aware the weather is different in California, yes, right? I like, have, you, Perloff, how can you argue that you know what the weather is going to be like on January 17th? Because... If they play in Detroit, I know exactly what the weather's going to well, be like. Detroit. Seventy degrees. Show me <laughs> where are they going? Where is this weather game going to be? <laughs> You're also in Philadelphia. In Philly. They're not yeah. going Could to Philly. Be very much raining, They're, snowing. Philly's not, getting, Philly's not getting home field. You're also it's not happening. So opposed to overreactions, and now you're not making any reaction to games. <laughs> it didn't matter how bad the Eagles played. It didn't matter how bad the Chiefs played against the Jets. And yesterday, it doesn't matter how how the Niners play on Sunday against Cleveland. It doesn't you're because weather, from weather games are outliers. They're total outliers. You cannot judge anything on them. You can't judge how a quarterback's going to do in dry weather compared to cold weather. Yeah. Okay, well then we can't give flowers to quarterbacks who are good in bad weather then. So take yeah. all the Brett Favre super cold games and just right. erase them Tom from his Brady resume. Tom Brady game. Yeah, Tom I mean, Brady in the bad weather. Like, these no longer can add, can count as accolades on their uh, other Tom, resumes. Was Tom Brady that good in the bad weather? Yeah. Tom Brady was a, a monster in those games. Are you... What? Yeah. Like, which he didn't have that many weather playoff games. I don't remember him against winning the Raiders. Against, 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 against the Colts, and they they were bludgeoning them. What do you mean? Yeah, I don't remember Tom Brady being like an amazing snow and wind and rain quarterback. I, I mean, they played games in Foxborough in January, week after week after week. That's some of the colder Ravens. games I mean, we've what, ever been to. And by the way, that Raiders game that was early Tom Brady. He didn't have to do anything in that. That was his first year. He wasn't throwing for a lot of yards. Uh, okay, <laughs> then forget it. Wait, wait. wait. So you're yeah. saying you like, don't think Tom, Tom Brady was a great cold weather snow? I'm mean, sure he was good, but I mean, I don't remember him winning big games. What's the big rain game that he won? I don't remember a ton of those. I mean, now you're just asking us to pull out a game or two from Tom Brady's career. But can you? You can't understand NFL, that him playing in Foxborough. I'll and tell then, you right now, them these, having home field advantage was crucial for the New England Patriots. The NFL this year, uh, actually, there was a Chargers game that was pretty, that was really windy. I remember that they AFC a really good Chargers game. game. But 
The point is, this year's NFC playoffs, I'm telling you, they're going through California or indoors. Philly's not, they have too many hard games. Philly's not getting uh, and the NFC title game. I just love how you can talk with such certainty about something like the weather, which nobody well, okay. can talk about with any certainty. That's the whole point. And taking Philly completely off the table as a possible road right. playoff game. By the way, I was January. at that NFC title game. It was gorgeous that day. It was like 57 degrees and sunny for the NFC okay. title game a couple, last year. A couple other possible options where Brock Purdy may have to play in the elements. You're at Jacksonville in November. You are at Seattle later in November, at Philadelphia first week of December. You are at Washington yeah. on New Year's Eve. So you're not you're not going to go 17 or 16 to 1. That being said, saying he's going might have to play there might it might rain in one of those cities. It's possible it could rain in Seattle. Give me <laughs> just might play the odds too. there. <laughs> give me give me any bet odds about being a cold weather snowy game for Brock Purdy in the playoffs. It's not happening. It's going to be indoors or California. I mean, there's a reason they play the Super Bowl in San Francisco. If They wouldn't do it if they thought it was going to be a monsoon in January. All right. I mean, you don't think your Eagles could be hosting that game? They might be, and it could snow no. in Philly. Lane Johnson's got a lateral ankle sprain, and he's their MVP. I don't know. Well, you don't want the lateral sprain. Everybody knows Detroit, that. Detroit basically plays a XFL schedule the rest of the season. <laughs> they could easily get they Come could easily on. get home field. Throw them a bone. Bogish is here with headlines. Good morning. Headlines sponsored by Northern Tool and Equipment. Get the tools you need from the brands you trust. Start solving your projects today at northerntool.com. We're made for this. You're making me uncomfortable. Like <laughs> I don't I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> They're both good at confusing and disappointing us. Who would be better at it? on Monday Night Football. Herbert on a third and ten. Shotgun snap. Sets his feet. Throws. Intercepted. From bad to worse. Game over. Intended for Quentin Johnston. And picked off. By a diving Stephon Gilmore as called by Matt Money Smith on Chargers Radio. Justin Herbert's pick with 82 seconds left came after Micah Parsons bulldozed through two old linemen for the Cowboys' first sack of the night. My bad, says the Chargers QB. I think we can do a lot better on offense, and um, especially at quarterback, I, I can play a lot better. So, um, you know, I, I thought the defense came up with some big stops today, held them when we needed them to. So hey, it's on us as an offense. Herbert threw for 227 yards, two scores in that game-ending pick, but it's the passes he missed that probably loomed the most large last night. His team is now under 500 at 2-3. and three. The Cowboys, meanwhile, enter their bye at 4-2. and two. They've won 10 of their last 11 following a loss. One touchdown passing, one running for Dak Prescott. Josh McDaniels says Jimmy Garoppolo avoided internal injury Sunday, but evaluation of his back injury continues. Rams running back Kyron Williams likely to miss Sunday's game with the Steelers thanks to an ankle injury suffered while running for a career-high 158 yards last weekend. And Colts rookie QB Anthony Richardson likely done for the year with that shoulder problem. You know, probably better. Yeah, why not? I mean, not better. Like, you don't want the guy to be hurt. And don't get me wrong there. Yeah, why, why mess around? Yeah, it's like, I mean, the Colts are kind of, they're kind of in the playoff race, yeah, but that's but, sort of a virtue of the of the division being so but mediocre. But Mitchell looked pretty bad that first half, especially. Oof, four turnovers? Come yeah, and that. they could run the ball. They paid all this money to Jonathan Taylor. What has he done since he came back? I mean, I know he had a, a big catch, but he has been very ineffective. I would almost go with the... Who's the guy behind him? Zach Moss. Zach Moss yeah, Zach looks Moss. Look just as good. Uh, thanks for nothing, Diamondbacks. The NL Cinderella opened the NLCS <laughs> with a 5-3 road <laughs> loss. It was 5 nothing, and they did have the timer at the plate in the ninth, but... The kick, the pitch. Swinging a hot shot to third. Backhand boom to second. There's one. On to first. Game over. No. No. Uh, no. Strong. No. Game two, <laughs> eight oh seven Eastern tonight. The Rangers, no. meanwhile, are halfway done with the Astros. Winning again in Houston yesterday, 5-4. Bruce Bochy's team scored four runs on five hits and two errors in the first or from Valdez. It's always good to get a crooked number up there, and especially early and held up for us. Uh, but it's about putting the ball in play, and we did that that first inning. Max Scherzer returns from a shoulder injury to start uh, game three tomorrow in Arlington. Did you guys see the guy? Was it Garcia? Adolis Garcia was at bat for the Rangers, and he almost got hit by an inside pitch and then ends up just doing like a cartwheel over yeah. home plate. Never seen anything like that before. No. He, I guess he's athletic. See, Philly's doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do that, Kyle Schwarber. Uh-huh.
Yeah, yeah. Uh, usually, you know, when you're rounding the bases yeah, at a slow pace at a home run, you can just sort of walk. <laughs> right, that's true. By the way, that series is not over. The Diamondbacks made a run last night. Right. Oof. I actually, th- it's all over. That's it. It's over. Just, just fast forward. No, I, <laughs> I tell like you, it's the, very over. Someone's yeah. going to get to that Philly staff. Yeah. It, this is going to be a stressful series. No, I can they, tell. They're, they're perfect. They're going to get there. It's gonna no, be no, 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 no. <laughs> you're that, spooked by Cattell Marte? Is that uh, what you're saying? Well, the, uh, the eighth and ninth innings were the, oh, the eighth inning. It, it's very stressful. I'm having trouble watching baseball, which is bizarre. Like, Maggie, you wouldn't know about this as a Me Mets too. fan, yeah, but postseason <laughs> baseball. It really, it's maybe the most stressful postseason sport because it's such a slow burn. Like, you're just waiting. It's like a 2-1 count, and you get so nervous. Yeah. No, and we saw it last October, but Scherzer was nice enough to give, like, 18 home runs to the Padres yeah. in yeah. the first three <laughs> innings. Right, yeah. right away, we could just go straight to the bar. Exactly. Um, I, I think baseball is designed. I think that's the most intense moment you can have in sports. Yeah. Like, more than a fourth and one, more than a 50-yard field goal. I think the bottom of the ninth, bases loaded, two outs, or whatever, bottom yeah. of the ninth situation is the most stressful. Why do you think that is? Um, I, it must be the pace, right? Because you have time to think about it, what's happening. You can't, football just happens so fast. You, you can watch call time out. You can ice kickers. Yeah. Free throws, big free throws in a basketball game. I don't know. For some reason, it, it feels like the most stressful is just the uh, bases, the, the bottom of the ninth situation. Yeah. Uh, NBA preseason action last night. Devin Booker, Kevin Durant warming up for the Paris Olympics with 19 points apiece <laughs> and the Suns 117-106 win over the Blazers. Luka Doncic will miss the Mavs' final tune-up on Friday with a strained calf, but he should be good for opening night next Wednesday. Phenom Connor Bedard without a point for the first time in four career games, but Chicago won in Toronto 4-1. Guys, back to you. You still watching every Bedard game? Thank you, Bogus. Oh, every second he's on the ice. No, last night there was a <laughs> lot going on. like a on. bat signal goes yeah. up until you to get to a TV. Yeah, no, there was a lot going on last night. Had to toggle between the Phillies, the football game, and Ben Simmons in the preseason. <laughs> just oh, wow. uh, had a lot going on last night. you hate watching Simmons? Oh. Not even hate watching, just enjoying how bad he's going to be for the Nets. It's going to be glorious. I mean, at this point, the dude's he's dead already. Like we've killed him. He's over. It's like he's he, it's like the Simpson line. It's like he's <laughs> he's dead. He can't die anymore. There's a big Ben Haters Club meeting every morning after a Nets preseason <laughs> game between this guy and our boss. Yeah. Who I mean everyone's like, "Oh, Ben's in great shape. He looks buff." And but guess go, no, he I think he actually looks puffy. He looks out of shape. Well, someone just, has the big Ben Simmons tattoo that we yeah, saw. Yeah, I was showing, showing this guy. Who would get a Ben Simmons? This guy's chest is all Ben Simmons' face. <laughs> ben Who Simmons would do that, do that player? I know. <laughs> ben Simmons would do that. Ben Simmons would do that, right. Yeah. But what kind of fan? Like, of all the players to pick, that's got to be the last one I would do. I mean, how far down the, the down the depth chart do you think it goes with people getting tattoos of athletes on their face? I think, the, I think the less good the athlete, the more stalker the fan. I would concur. <laughs> I think that's you know. right. Ben Simmons should be more worried about that guy than any Kardashian Jenner that he's ever dated. Like I Absolutely. De- I definitely think someone has a Nick's Jerome's Jerome James uh, tattoo. Someone somewhere. have a Jerome James? <laughs> yes. Um, if Brock Purdy plays a playoff game in rain, will you get Ben Simmons' face on <laughs> one of your shoulders? <laughs> no. On an arm. Even just no. a temporary tattoo. No, no. no be- Perloff is convinced that Sam Darnold is going to come in and win a playoff game. For which team? Oh, oh, the yeah. Niners. Yeah, by the way, that's a good point. <laughs> a Brock Purdy has to be standing. <laughs> you know what? You guys know, I mean, listen, by the way, there's a real bigger show argument here. You know why Brock Purdy's not going to the rain? Small hands. Oh, boy, don't give He's me He's got that. nine and a quarter. That's Wrong. probably why he dropped in no. the draft. Yes, that's 100% why he dropped that ball. Yeah, and Maggie, when Kenny Pickett was getting killed for small hands, he did not buy into it. But you saw what happened to Brock Purdy in Cleveland. Small science. hands. It's, dude, it's total science. <laughs> 855-212-4CBS. No. 855-212-4227. Coming up, one NFL quarterback. He's got a little magic to him, doesn't he? We'll get to that in a moment. Don't move. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining.
Andrew Perloff Skyline Chili Bet Payoff. <laughs> Number 10. With the cheese. He is very delicately breaking the film. Number 9. <laughs> there is juice cascading off his nose. Oh it's good. He Number 8. All the way in. Oh, we have spaghetti. <laughs> he has found the pasta. Number Another seven. Big oh bite. God. Oh, that's a lot wow. of pasta. You're really getting in there. <laughs> Number I six. Why I didn't. <laughs> there we go. Slurping sound. Good slurping. <laughs> Number five. Oh. Number four. Oh my God. That was a full open mouth tongue <laughs> scoop of pasta. This Number is three. Oh, it's like he's a four year old. Number two. A bowl of chili <laughs> oh, our first rip of pasta. And the number one moment from Andrew Perloff's Skyline oh, Chili Bet Payoff. Noises as we gobble up. Oh, oh no, it's over. Top 10 moments from Andrew Perloff. Start solving your projects today at Northern. Afternoon. I was the only one of the two of us who remembered when the defensive player of the week was coming. So I could think about it a little bit. I forget every time. It's now that we're in the Tuesday. morning, so it's a Tuesday morning, and I can, you need a minute to come up with the defensive player of the week. No, no, no. Getting the defensive player of the week is also, it's like knowing the personnel on the other side. Like, we yeah. used to know Stu Kovacs. Now it's like Pete and EJ. I think, I don't know who picked this week's. EJ. Well, okay. So it's like, would EJ go oh, pro? Would EJ, he go college? There's a plan with that, too. EJ is a Jets fan, that. right? Oh, there we go. But wait, 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 wait. I'm EJ's not sure. Jets fan. It's got to be Jets. It's got to be Quinn and Williams. It's got to be Tony no, Adams. Something no. like that. See, I don't know if there was one standout. That was more of a team defensive effort. I don't know. The interception on Jalen Hurts at the end, kind of, that could be the defensive play of the week. But Lottie could have caught that pass. That was <laughs> hit him in the chest. Uh, <laughs> defensive player of the week is it I like guys who have like five sacks like a Khalil Mack six sack game Cleveland's defense I don't know if there was one standout there they were pretty dominant I mean they were amazing their whole defense as a whole is just incredible Miles Garrett had an awesome see game. I know EJ a little bit here I think he does not want to do the Jets because he doesn't want to be perceived as obvious on this one see I know EJ <laughs> and I feel like he will take a Jets victory at any chance he gets and would love to rub it in your face like we all would <laughs> that's not a specific EJ thing. <laughs> oh, wait. But, but by the way, are we just ignoring the college game? Well, that's what I'm thinking. Oregon, Washington. Oh, can't there's really no do defense, defense there. there. Yeah. Not so much. Colorado, Definitely Stanford. Stanford. No. no. I don't think I can name anybody on Colorado's defense. All right. So we're <laughs> Besides going. Besides Travis Hunter. And that we, wasn't great. Are we both going Tony Adams? I think it's got, it's something. It's either Tony Adams or it's Quinn and Williams. Or did you see that Quinn and Williams and his brother Quincy, Quinn and had this, had the first interception and Quincy had a sack, and apparently they both play well when their grandmother is in attendance. Hmm. Yet it's a mystery why the grandmother isn't just there every game. If they really play that well, get this okay. lady in a fifty-yard line. I'll go with Miles Garrett. So, uh, so we got Miles Garrett, and what's the guess over there, Maggie? Uh, I'll say the Jets. Just Jets defense, embarrassing another good quarterback. Okay, so the defensive player of the week this week is Bryce Huff. Jets oh, pass rusher. Go. So he led the Jets in sacks. I uh, did not go Tony Adams because, uh, you know, the pick was kind of thrown to him. But I thought Bryce Huff as a situational pass rusher was uh, an absolute monster and gave, uh, you know, the, the backup uh, right tackle hell with the Eagles. I think he kind of changed the game in the fourth quarter. So Bryce Huff.
So you can't be that deep cut. <laughs> EJ, you can't be that. You can't pick a Jets player because we would have expected you to. The point of the Navy Federal read is to fool us. I did, but I did fool you. Yeah, you said I, Miles it, it, Garrett. It, it worked. You said Miles Garrett. So right. Miles Garrett. I say Miles Garrett every week when yeah. I can't think of another answer. You also <laughs> named like three Jets and did not name the Jet I said. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Wait, so. didn't he also have the scoop and score last week? No, that, no, that was, was that the was other. Bryce, that was Bryce Hall. Bryce Hall. So we have a lot of oh. Jet players that are named very close. So there's a Brees Hall, there's a Bryce Hall, there's a Bryce Huff. There's literally two there's guys two with the same Michael name. Michael Carter. Yeah. So I sent you a stat. You have too. a couple Wilsons. Garrett Wilson, Zach Wilson. Garrett Wilson, Zach Wilson. I sent you a stat that Max Crosby is one of EJ's favorite players. He had a killer game as always. Yep. He leads the league in pressures, but I think Bryce Huff is second. <laughs> Bryce Huff is so underrated. It's because yeah. he, has, he plays. He plays so few snaps, but like he's basically yeah. a. Pure third down specialist, but he if he ended up with eight or nine sacks this year, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, but here's the thing: it's like if you do if you put up all this all these numbers yeah. against the Patriots offense, does it actually matter? <laughs> That's a good point. I mean, that is true. Sorry, with Max, Max Crosby. Yeah, I, mean, but, I know uh, you had to work hard, but like that, not that hard. Speaking of Bryce Huff, how about that Bryce Harper last night? Yeah. Sorry, I have to bring it back to pro <laughs> Philadelphia. Yeah. I know because you, you just, guys you guys should not root against Philadelphia teams just because I'm here. I don't root against all of your teams. Yes, I would you be do. rooting for, against the Phillies if like literally the we mayor of Philadelphia met. was the co-host of <laughs> Perloff, Maggie and Perloff today if they were in for you. Uh, See, no, I don't root I don't We'd stay away from I don't from actually I don't root against the Bills at all. I like the Bills. Everybody likes the Bills. How can you root against the Buffalo Bills? I I actively root against them. <laughs> I don't. Um I love the Bills. I just criticize them a lot. Um I think you are actively rooting against the Bills. No, no, I'm, I'm not. Oh, no, not at all. Everybody, it's impossible to root against the Bills. I do think they'll blow it in the playoffs because I have eyes. That That's not energy. rooting against them. That's <laughs> common sense. And I don't root against, you think I root against the Jets or the Giants? They're not even nearly relevant enough to root against. There it is. <laughs> it's the condescension. I mean, are they? That's what it is. I mean, the Jets are celebrating three and three like they just won the Super Bowl. I'm surprised there's not a parade. That was a, a tough stretch. That. You had a problem with that, Bilotti? I had that, a problem with yeah. that comment Salah said. Oh, you should. I, I, they're not there yet. They shouldn't be talking like that. Salah can't help himself. He yeah. loves a good, like, quip. You know, it's like saying you embarrass these quarterbacks. Like you didn't embarrass he's, Dak he, Prescott. Let's he's talking like a, <laughs> that's a good point. Talking like a defensive coordinator, not like a head coach, with that comment. Absolutely, very. I fair. totally agree with that. Let's obliterate more coaches. Ah, eight five five. Coaching around the league is bad. Coaching around the league with all McCarthy, uh, Rezo, Staley, Rezo, bad. not good. One of these guys going to get a clue. 855-2124-CBS, 855 <laughs> Easy for us to say. <laughs> like, we're, we're Lombardis over here. Coming up, we're going to make a case for one team going all the way. Aggie Perloff next. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining.
three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. He's destined to get knocked out by Jake Paul. She's destined to film it. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. Cowboys win what they call a must-win game last night in L.A. Welcome to the show, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff. So glad to have you. Get your day started off on the right foot, especially for the Cowboys fans, because you got shellacked last week. You yep. had to show a lot more fight and finally, in a close game, you got a good Dak Prescott game. Mike McCarthy didn't screw it up for you, so you feel good about that. And ultimately, the defense finished it off against a good quarterback in Justin Herbert, who had a chance with the game on his arm, and the Dallas defense totally snuffed him out. Okay, if this was a must-win game in a few weeks when they play the Eagles, is that a must-win game too? Yeah. So how many must-win games can you have in a schedule? Is there a rule about <laughs> many. this? Many. I, I think don't you think... can have five must-win games a season. How can you have five must-win games yeah. a season? That especially, seems like too, that's too rich. Especially if you, you know, are a playoff team. You know, if you're someone who has big aspirations. You know, once you get to the playoffs, since winner go home. These are must-wins because yes. of a couple things. Number one, again, you're coming off of a bad loss. So you want to get that taste out of your mouth before you go into your bye week, which is what Dallas is about to do. But secondly, you know, I think that Dak Prescott has mm -hmm. been, you know, really questioned. And I think a lot of that is fair because Dak's on the verge of another contract extension because Dak has been in this league for a decade and has doesn't have a lot to show for it. 
And I think you wanted to see an offense that got catered to cut down on Dak Prescott's interceptions. Yep. But what could they start doing well? Like, what could they start doing better than they did a season ago? And that wasn't necessarily clear. It might not still be that clear, but last night they showed that it, when he uses his legs, he can run, yep. he can he can be effective, and that this, you know, in a dogfight of a game, in a close game, they can pull it out. That all sounds great. Yeah. But here's the reality of the situation. Say somehow Justin Herbert gets bailed out by the officials and has a touchdown drive to win the game last night. Because that's the way that game went last night. Yeah. They easily could have lost. It was 2017. Then the Cowboys are 3-3. Three and three. Guess what? They're going to collect easy wins. They're going to end up in the playoffs. The real test, the must-win game for this team, I don't care that they can beat the Chargers in a, in a slog game in L.A., my question really is, they, they need to measure themselves against the Eagles and the Niners. Otherwise, what are we doing here? Like, they need to be an elite team. If they were 3-3, three three, by the way, they're still about to go on a run. They have a lot of wins left on that schedule. As long as Dak is healthy, they're going to be good. And even if Dak isn't healthy, they're probably going to be good. So I, I didn't see that as a must-win game at all. I think you're going to really start talking about must-win. How are they against the Eagles and the Niners? Are they closing this gap? Did you see anything last night that convinces you of that? That's what I want to talk about, not that they came over the W. Because they're going to be in the playoffs, Maggie. I'm telling you, they're going to get wins over Washington, wins over the Giants, and they'll be fine. Okay, well, they're, they're, it's like stepping stones, right? Because you took a big step back. If you use the 49ers as your litmus test, they failed that miserably. They got blown out. The game was awful for them. And now it's like, all right, so you got humbled. You got pushed back a few steps. You can't go in and lay an egg against the Chargers, a team you are better than, although the spread was only one and a half. It's not like they were predicting that the Cowboys were going to be a touchdown no, it was, favorite It here. was on the road. Yeah, on the road. So I a think, game that you could easily drop and, to me, not be a huge problem. I, I think it's a nice step forward for them, and especially not just Dak Prescott. You got CeeDee Lamb had a fantastic game. Brandon Cooks gets involved. He gets a touchdown. Pollard was good, and then your defense comes back to life after they got mashed against the 49ers. Yeah, now here's the question. Here's what I think was one of the big problems against the 49ers. Mike McCarthy's play calling is pretty uncreative. Yep. Did you watch last night and see, okay, they finally figured all that out? Because I think it was still pretty tough to move the ball. Um, I mean, Lamb had almost 200 yards receiving, right? What was his final stat? I mean, he, he had some really big catches. Dak had a nice 18-yard play. Touchdown scramble. I mean, that yeah, would have I been mean, on a broken down play, but sure. But still, it was it was kind of a low scoring game for most of the game. I mean, it ended up yeah. twenty to seventeen. I just don't think I'm not sure that this offense is creative enough and consistent enough to really be the elite team that Dallas wants to be. Because anything with less than a Super Bowl to me is a disappointment for this team. Definitely. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm, Lamb I'm at 117 yards receiving. I don't know where I got 200 from. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, seven I catches, did, 117. Sorry. I want to give a high bar to this team. So last night. It, it, while I agree with you, it's a nice win, a stepping stone. Like, listen, they, they need to really fix this offense and make it much more consistent uh, because they're going to have to, at some point, they're going to have to beat the Niners and at some point, they're going to have to beat the Eagles if they want to go where they want to go. Yeah. I mean, the Eagles, they've had some success against, but the Niners, they have not. So we'll see. I mean, the well, they beat Gardner Minshew last year. They did not. That's true. They it was haven't not beat Jalen Hurts. So the other side of this, so if you're a Cowboy fan, 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. I was impressed with the comeback win, the bounce back win, I should say, for the Cowboys. Perloff, not so much. He's, yeah, I got to see more from this Cowboys team. Totally fair. They yeah. go into their bye week. Uh, they come out on the other side. They'll play the Rams. On the flip side, Justin Herbert, who had another opportunity in prime time. Not that that should really matter, but you have a big stage. It's all to yourself. You're playing against America's team. You get the ball with two and a half minutes left, basically, and timeouts, and you couldn't do jack. Now, the Chargers are not a perfect team. Of course they're not, clearly. The Chargers have a bad history. Of course they have to overcome that. But I'd love to see Herbert just go out and win the game. You know, I, he had time. He Listen, he was he hurried. Not, he was hurried and pressured. Yes, the, the Dallas defense. He front. did not have time at all. That's exactly what he did not have last night. The last... That last interception, so he gets sacked by Micah Parsons on second down. So then on third and long, he has to go, uh, tries to go to Quentin Johnston. It gets picked off by Stephon Gilmore. Yeah. That was a bad throw. He missed uh, he throws a, he, earlier in the he game. He had a, another human being draped over his whole body. I think his lower half, somebody hit him. He had three and a half Mississippi. He counted that it. was not three and a half it, Mississippi. It was three and a half Mississippi. We got to watch that play again because I feel like nobody held their block for even a, a millisecond. He had time in there, Proloff. He definitely had time. And it's not going to be perfect when you're a quarterback in the NFL. That's he, why we love the great ones. And Justin Herbert... We're 
we're, we're told and we can see with our eyes he's got all the tools, but where's the big time throw in a big moment? Where is that? That That's the one thing he's missing. There's no quarterback, not Joe Montana, not Tom Brady, not Patrick Mahomes, who can make a big time throw from his back. It's just not happening. Tom Brady would have gotten the ball out in .5 seconds. You know that's true. It's four down territory. You didn't have to get it all back in that one throw. No. And you know that Brady is the worst guy to compare him to because Brady always thrived in those situations no matter what the protection was like. What we could see on the camera, we haven't seen the All-22. We probably won't see the (laughs) All-22. But listen, the the Chargers receivers get no separation at all. And in that particular situation, third and 10, that was a big advantage for the Cowboys defense. They were pinning their ears back on that final drive. I think you're underestimating Micah Parsons and that crew. They I'm really, not at all. I think yeah, they're I mean, a great I, defense. To me, that last drive was, whoa, the pass rush really turned it on. I'm not killing. Tri- the third and 10, he had to try to throw the ball somewhere. I mean, it was kind of a 50-50 ball for a second, and the receiver it wasn't the worst pick I've ever seen at all, by no means. Well, okay, what's the bar here? The worst pick you've ever saw? I mean, Is uh, Jalen Hurts yesterday <laughs> against the Jets. Well, that that is-, is the worst pick I've ever seen. This is the opposite. Yeah, I- he had to desperately try and make some kind of play. And it was either take the sack and be fourth and 20 or at least throw the ball where somebody has a chance. Okay, but we're not talking about a guy who should be this overmatched in the moment. That's what I'm saying. Because his line didn't hold up on those last two plays. He was completely... He was okay. destroyed. The Parson sack, I'll give you. He had no... no, Not even like a half a second for that. He did have time and, uh, uh, before the interception to Gilmore. You and I are just going to disagree, but it's, it, it's there. Ooh, and... I, I, at that time, against a very good team, three, it's three never, and a half Mississippi. There is no way that was three and a half Mississippi. We counted it before the show. You're I, never going to get a perfect pocket. You're, it's never going to be perfect for you. That's why the elite guys separate themselves when it's when it's messy, when it's bad, when you are going against a great defense. So, to me, I think that Justin Herbert, like, I think he deserves criticism. He also missed Keenan Allen on some big throws in the first half when this game was. I mean, the game was in the balance the entire time. It was a tight game. There were not a lot of points. It was very hard to score yeah. in this game. I think, actually, we forgot about this Cowboys defense a little bit uh, because the Niners game was so bad. Yeah, but fair point. Uh, I think Dan Quinn just manhandled Kellen Moore, <laughs> the former Cowboys coordinators. Dan Quinn's a great coach, and you could tell he knew exactly where the Chargers were going on most plays. To get any offense going, Justin Herbert had to make these miraculous 20-yard down the field ropes that were incredible. It just wasn't easy. The run game, the big problem was obviously they Eckler had 14 carries for 27 yards. That is really, really bad. Yeah. And if you can't run, that puts a lot of pressure on your quarterback because you get in these third and nines, third and tens. I, I'm not putting that on Herbert at all. 855-212-4CBS, 855-212-4227. You're welcome to call in. You're welcome to weigh in on the chat. YouTube.com slash CBS Sports Radio uh, is where the weedos and the coffee drinkers hang out. Of course, we say good morning to our incredible CBS Sports Radio affiliates, who we appreciate so much. Sirius XM Channel 158 and the free Odyssey app. Other ways that you can listen to the show and get involved. Okay. We want to do a little something we're going to call Convince Me. All right. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Come to wow, order. That sounds ominous. Yeah, this is like bootleg uh, Law and Order music, and I'm obsessed with it. It's like if Law and Order, it's like set in the Matrix. Anyway, Perloff and I have some things that we staunchly believe that the other person doesn't. So we're gonna try to convince that person to come to our side. Got a couple things for you. Okay. Would you like to go first? No, or I want you. To go first? I want you to go first. I'm okay. still organizing my notes here. <laughs> okay. Well. Here we go. I believe that the Detroit Lions are on the same tier as the 49ers and the Eagles. They are one of the top teams in the NFC. And here's how I'm going to try to convince you. First, of course, they're 5-1. and one. They're 3-0 and oh on the road. Kansas City, Green Bay, Tampa Bay. Okay? They beat the Bucs, who have a great run defense, even though they have lost their last two running backs. This is a team that's won four straight games by 14 points or more. They are physical. Their defense, four times holding opponents to 20 points or fewer. They're top 10 in opponents' points per game and opponents' yards per game. They're getting pressure without blitzing. They're top five in quarterback pressures and hurries. They're only allowing 3.2 yards a carry. This team, statistically, the real deal. On offense, top five in points per game, yards per game, touchdowns per game. They are awesome on third down. 
They've got all mm -hmm. everything you would want by metrics and eye test tell you that the Detroit Lions are a top tier team. Also, let's not discount this. Have you seen how their fans are traveling right now? They are making home games of these road games. That's going to continue. These Lion fans have been waiting forever for something like this. They've never seen, even going back to the early 90s, this much enthusiasm for this team. Can I convince you the Lions top tier in the NFC? What is top tier? On the same level as the 49ers and the Eagles. So let me ask you a question. Let's take out the Chiefs game. What is the team they beat that you're like, ooh, that's a good team? That I, may, maybe, not only are that, show me the team that's not going to be a top eight in the draft that they beat. I, you don't know who's going to be top eight in the draft. I do, way. sure do. And it sure is the Lions' schedule. Well, okay. I will, they were in a very close game against the Seattle Seahawks. They end up losing. That was really, really odd. I'm not giving, I'm not giving credit for that because they didn't win that one. Okay. Well, how about Tampa Bay is Tampa not, Bay probably is not going to be top eight. They're, they're, they're a team with a winning record. They're terrible. Can you say they're terrible? Because I thought I saw a lot of Baker Mayfield love before they lost this. Carolina's game. the worst team in the league. I, I think we can all agree Green okay. Bay's not happening this year. And Atlanta stinks. Okay, well, how are they winning those games though? These are not squeaker games. Maybe the competition isn't as elite. Mm -hmm. By the way, like I don't know who are the Eagles playing, but that's been I, I think super the, awesome. The Eagles have all sorts of problems. I, honestly, the team that they don't measure up to, in my mind, is the Niners. I don't see them as the same as the Niners. That's the only the one that I'm like, oh, these two teams look different to me. I think that the Lions are on that level. And especially if the 49ers injury situations keep continuing, it's going to level the playing field even more. Okay, did I convince you? No, no. <laughs> uh, I, I agree. I think they're going to have the number one seed for sure because they placed nothing but patsies all season long. But I feel like I just I can't wrap my head around the Lions hosting the Cowboys, Niners, or Eagles. Maybe they – and winning – Winning two of those games and getting they, to the Super Bowl. They play at Baltimore this weekend. Okay, yeah. what are you trying to convince me of? Okay, I want to get back to this Brock Purdy thing. So, Brock Purdy looked terrible in the rain and against Cleveland's defense. But can you at least give me that maybe facing Cleveland's defense, who is a historically great defense so far, yep. in the wind and the rain, and without Debo and without McCaffrey. Now, I'm not saying that Brock Purdy is Patrick Mahomes. But how can you possibly judge a quarterback in those exact conditions with the fact that they are not going to have that same exact conditions? Again, they go to Minnesota this week, indoors, obviously. Debo, we know Debo's going to be back. Because if Debo is day-to-day, Debo is showing up. It looks like McCaffrey is not going to have a long-term injury. And the words, Christian McCaffrey is not going to have a long-term injury, that's a victory for the <laughs> Niners. Uh, Trent Williams, the left tackle also. Trent Williams, day-to-day, -day, so foot he'll injury. be back. The, the line was terrible. Now, Brock Purdy, again, I'm not saying that he is Trevor Lawrence and he's going to make all these gigantic plays, but I am very convinced that we'll see the Brock Purdy that we saw the first five weeks of the season once the conditions get better. The other thing, too, is the Niners can lean towards their run game to help him more. They could run once McCaffrey went out as effectively in the second half. I think, honestly, San Francisco should have won that game. They should have had a slightly shorter field goal. They basically won the game. I am, <laughs> they, 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 they didn't, but yeah. I mean, they had a they had a forty yard field goal at the end of the game. How, what is the percentage in the NFL of hitting that? Ninety six percent, ninety seven percent. It's like an extra. It's basically an extra extra points thirty seven uh, yards. So anyway, the panic with San Francisco was crazy, and the panic around Brock Purdy was totally misplaced. Okay, I didn't see panic from people about Brock Purdy. Oh, I, I just would love to know when did it become against the law to criticize Brock Purdy? We've gone so far in the other direction where if Purdy has a bad game, which he did, it's excuse after excuse and explain it away. He's just like every other quarterback in the NFL in that he's not above reproach. And he would tell you himself he had a terrible game. Yeah. Now, where I think that this might not be an outlier is not just about the weather, but if those weapons continue to be hurt, I don't know if Purdy can continue to be as effective as he was. So I want to wait and see. But it's like if you criticize Brock Purdy, somehow you uh, you know, are banned from watching NFL games or you should be like put thrown in jail or something. Well, I, don't, I don't get how this defense of Purdy, like why is it so f so f like fervent? It's Nobody in America was saying, everyone saw he played badly. The yeah. question is, is he going to play badly in his next game? That's the question. That, everyone knows well, that was a bad Minnesota, game. at Minnesota, because... they're not really putting up, like, that's yeah. not the best test as a bounce back. Now, it's on the road, but still.
Well, I think the function, I, honestly, I think people are underestimating the defense he went up against last week. I, I think it's hard to wrap our head around how good this, you have actually were early on this, and I'm surprised you forgot about it, how good this Browns defense is. Oh, I yeah. Mean, Miles Garrett's my defensive player of the historically year. Historically good. Of course, Cleveland has played three rain games, which you guys don't seem to think matters, but obviously Well, how about matters. this? With Purdy against Minnesota, I don't know how, yeah. but then Cincinnati at Jacksonville, yeah, which, got is two not tough a, ones. which is not a, an easy place to play. Yeah, Jacksonville's defense has looked amazing. Now, so which uh, let's just talk about Monday night. Which Purdy is it closer to the Purdy against the Cowboys or the Purdy against the Browns? I think because it, I think because of his skill set, yeah. it's entirely dependent on who's healthy. I'll tell you in right now, De- Debo's playing. Debo probably almost came back last week. Yeah. Um, you have I, not yet convinced me it was an outlier. I need oh, to see more. Gosh, okay. I will guarantee that is a get-right game. <laughs> <laughs> and right. Kirk Cousins in primetime. Are you aware of this? Oh, my gosh. I forgot. <laughs> you uh, gave me a layup right there. <laughs> Kirk Cousins in primetime. What a disaster. Talk about, like, circadian rhythms Honestly, and Brock Purdy just has to show up at the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> and that defense is going to hand them 21 points. Oh, come on, Kirk. Okay. Uh, let's go to the phones. Lane is in Alaska. Wants to talk about the Cowboys. Good morning, Lane. Hey, good morning, folks. Hey, I just wanted to say... Um, you know, every week you guys do a great job of breaking it down, analyzing everybody and seeing what's going on. And I really like to take this morning on how Dan Quinn adjusted the defense yesterday. I do understand, though, that, you know, these teams are all professionals, man. Any week, anybody can beat anybody. They're all tough. They're all great players. And, uh, you know, they're all men. They all want to win. But um, I was really impressed with the way that uh, – that the Cowboys, everybody else stepped up. You know, Mike could take so much attention yep. that the rest of that defense is just flying around there making plays. Hey, Lee, can I ask you a question? Is Dallas, like, the biggest fan base in Alaska? Who's Who's got the biggest fan base? No, in? it's the Seapups, man, the Seahawks. Oh, got it. Yeah. Yeah, that would make a little more See, sense. Don't the yeah. Seahawks have a – they have a partnership with Alaska Airlines, too. So oh, there's a lot the of field? corporate stuff. Uh, yeah, yep. they a, yeah, they do have a partnership. I mean, all the Seattle sports, the Kraken, the Seahawks, the Mariners, they're all big in Alaska. Got it. Cool. Well, thank you. And uh, it seems yeah. like you're a Cowboy fan, so enjoy what you saw last night. I I totally agree with what he said about that Cowboys defense. There was like multiple. The, the defensive tackles were dominating the game. Yeah. Absolutely. It wasn't even Micah Parsons. It was a pressure coming up the middle against Herbert that was causing all the problems. That's a great defense. Coming up, 855-212-4CBS if you want to weigh in. We do have the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen a couple ask for on their wedding register. And we have football stuff, of course. We've got the, all that for you. It's Maggie and Pearl off CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remain. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining.
two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Okay, Maggie and Perloff, the poll I put up on my own Twitter feed, if they play in the playoffs, who do you like, Detroit Lions or Dallas Cowboys? What is going on here? 89% say the, the Detroit Lions. This is their moment. They haven't played anybody. Do you have neither, no idea? Neither of a lot of teams. You have I mean, no idea. I guess I would say San Francisco has actually played some teams. I looked at the odds, by the way. It's really interesting. They I mean, played Pittsburgh. Sorry, they played the Rams, who I think are better than people believed. So they, Detroit, they Dallas, obviously. Detroit and Dallas are sort of in a mix as the kind of a distant third in the NFC behind San Francisco and the Eagles. I think this is a really. I would love to see Detroit and Dallas in a playoff game. Doesn't that feel like that would be a, a perfect matchup to see Jared Goff, a bit of a statue back there? Can Micah Parsons get to him? Mm -hmm. Uh, interesting to see if Micah Parsons last night with a big sack can get back in the defensive player of the year race. But we need right to now take... he's got five on this season. Five, yeah, five sacks. Five sacks on the season. Yeah. Last year was 13 and a half. The first his rookie year was 13. So we need to take a quick break from sports because I have an issue in my personal life here that I have a story that relates to this. Oh boy. So we are now in the mornings and I've been driving to work. Yes. I've been accumulating a couple uh, parking tickets. <laughs> yeah. Whose fault is it, though, really? Um, New York City's for having <laughs> draconian parking city uh, rules. Okay. That's right. Who, who yes. else's fault is it, though? Because you can pay online on your phone. They're making it pretty simple. Yeah. And you keep forgetting. They got to do me it. one day. My register, my inspection was one day late. Oh, that October was awful. 1st, they hit me. And then I forgot to hit the parking app and they got me. So. So how anyway, much are you in the hole? 65 bucks Oof. per ticket. Oof. Now, Ouch. but I am inspired because I found this story yesterday. There is a couple in Texas who has a registry. Like we all had registries, gifts that you want people to buy for you. They put on their registry a $231 parking ticket. Oh my God. So as a gift, you could pay, oh no, I'm sorry, it was a speeding ticket. As a gift, you could 
pay the speeding ticket for the happy couple. Is that class? What is this, Fast and the Furious? How do you get a $230 speeding ticket? You have to be driving like a maniac. Well, regardless of that, what do you think of putting it on your registry? I think it's insane. I'd be embarrassed if I had a $230 speeding ticket. I would not want any of my friends and family to know that because clearly you're doing 100 in a school zone or something to get that kind of ticket. I Okay. Forget the speed in the ticket. Let's talk about the wedding registry aspect. Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I like it, and I'll tell you why I like it. Because the crap that we had on our wedding registry, China and Cuisinart yeah. and some Those sort are... of red mixing machine that I still don't <laughs> understand, none of that has ever been touched since our wedding day. We got more stuff that takes up more room in the kitchen that has never, ever been used. Yeah, you have a daughter about to go to high school. Like, it's been a while <laughs> since yeah. you touched that stuff on the wedding registry. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, that was weird. We've been married for 15 years years now. None of it has ever come into play in any aspect. We've never used the China once, never served <laughs> anything in the China. It just sits there and you're nervous about if it's going to break. This is something practical. If you're going to spend money on stuff, why not spend money on something the couple actually needs? Okay, but where does this end? Are you like, you know, by the way, I've got five grand in credit card debt. Can everyone just jump in and I take care it. of that? Creative. I love it. <laughs> it's very creative. I, I know, love it. But isn't it supposed to be, is that the spirit Really, of a wedding gift? These are tough times, though. With inflation, do we really have time to <laughs> to waste money on a Cuisinart? Like candlesticks? Well, some people yeah. some people do with a registry where you're paying for their honeymoon. Yes, I've done that before. You know, I, I, I think it's along those same lines. I got to be honest. I so I I did that once for a friend. This is a long time ago, and they were getting married, and I was like, "Oh, I'll, here's the thing on your registry for your honeymoon," and it was like by the couple, like scuba diving or snorkeling or something. So I buy them the snorkeling. It's like 200 bucks or something or 250, whatever. And I see them like a couple months later. And I'm like, guys, how is the snorkeling? They're like, yeah, we didn't leave the hotel room. I'm like what? <laughs> they didn't use it. They didn't do any. They just sat by the <laughs> pool and drank the whole time or whatever. And we're in the room doing whatever and never even used the snorkeling. Wow. It's a waste. I'm reading, yeah. by the way, this is a huge trend. Since the pandemic, more people are are actually paying bills, and this is not. She's not the first person with this parking ticket. Yeah, <laughs> I, I like, like pay this. Pay my cable bill, and even snorkeling's yeah. a little fancy. Can't you do something more practical, like buy them a meal? I don't know. It was just it was on the site. I clicked okay. it. Yeah, I, I'm totally into this. Uh, I think I, I, as a kid, all I wanted was cash for a birthday present. I did well, not course. want a, a sweater. Yeah. <laughs> now, someone who was just at a, I was just at a wedding this past weekend. What yep. I can say is, the person putting speeding ticket, two hundred plus dollars speeding ticket on their registry, probably a fun wedding. They're probably a fun time. <laughs> that I, I can guarantee you is I what think. you're saying. They're reckless people. They yeah, have yeah. No you're, gonna, you're gonna get lit at that, at that <laughs> wedding for sure. I go in the complete <sighs> other direction on this. Really? Yeah, I think this means they suck. No. Uh, they're cheap. <laughs> they're suck cheap, at life. right, Bogus? I don't know about cheap, but just that's a really lame thing to do. Experience, great. Yeah. I've seen people now, new new to me, maybe not new in general, making like a little Venmo thing for their bachelor or bachelorette party, like buy me a drink. Yeah. I'm in on that. But I made a mistake driving. Is it, you're, you getting married <laughs> is not a GoFundMe page. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you yeah. paid for my experience of running the red light. Yeah, right. Thank you. I was no. really in a rush that day, so I had to blow through a four yeah. stop signs and a red light. No so chance. Thank you. But also, everybody... I, saw, I once passed a car on the highway that had the Venmo on the side of <laughs> the car. That they're going to, the... to a bachelor yeah. party. Buy me a drink. Here's the Venmo. It's like, so... Not on your life. Because <laughs> that would probably get me pulled over, and then I need someone else to pay for my ticket. Be honest now, though, Bogus. When you got married, would you rather have fancy candlesticks or a hundred fifty dollars gift certificate to Costco? I'm a big gift card guy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Gift cards are great. I feel like Pearl is considering breaking up with his wife, getting remarried just for the registry to pay off the parking <laughs> ticket since you've been driving to work. No, Doesn't the parking work. tickets I'm okay with. I would definitely put like the daily bills is what gets me. Like, <laughs> Grocery bill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like three months of Netflix. I can't <laughs> rethink this. Yeah. Here's like, a promo code for you. Here's, here's, my, here's my Geico uh, account number. Can you go in there and just take three months of recurring payments? Pay for my solar panels, please. Yeah. Just ask for straight cash. Don't yeah. tell me what it's for. So you can pay yeah. use whoever you want. Don't tell me it's for a parking ticket. And make it Goodfellas style where I just hold the uh, the yes. sack out and you throw in the, the, the stack envelopes. of bills. Yeah. yeah. Maggie, you you don't seem to buy this uh, sort of tacky registry thing. <laughs> no. Also, I would definitely, I give cash ever since that snorkeling debacle. 
I give cash. I only want to get cash. Oh, I don't so want to do anything you're else. You're a straight cash business at this point? Okay. And there, are, there have been so many weddings where this is the this is embarrassing, probably just for maybe the woman's side. I'm not sure if men care about this, but where I've forgotten to get the cash. So then oh, I got to yeah. go to the ATM. So then I'm just giving you a stack of 20s. Dirty 20s. <laughs> yeah, the and if they're not clean, oh, that's the worst. <laughs> the envelope is so thick. <laughs> not that I'm like, I'm not yeah, this yeah. ball or anything, but you know, like people you really close to think you like $300 uh, in 20s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You look like you're trying to buy drugs. Yeah, you get the note back. <laughs> Dear Maggie, thank you for the $87.13. <laughs> 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 Here's exactly. your ATM receipt. Yeah, thanks yeah, for yeah, using yeah. the ATM in the and hotel that, lobby. That frozen yogurt uh, <laughs> punch card with four punches. On it. That was really good. <laughs> now, exactly. now, what, now, what do you do if someone forgets to give their gift? What do you mean? In the registry. So, if, like, say we had a couple people that that didn't give a gift. Okay. Oh. At the wedding. Yeah. What yeah like a do? year, Pat. You have a year, right? Oh yeah. You, but you no, hunted no, them down? No, no. But like, you go through the you go through the list and you're like, oh, so so and so so and so, and like. You think it might have been a mistake, or yeah, it's usually a do? single guy who forgets to give <laughs> yeah. the present. Oh, yeah. He came and drank everything at the bar and conveniently yeah. forgot it. <laughs> I hit I, on your aunt. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know that. But one time was this was super embarrassing, but we made up for it after. Which was I don't know if this has ever happened to you guys. It was one of my husband's friends the, a wedding, so he had the card with the money in the inside of the suit jacket. Mm -hmm. So then it's like, you know, you get to party and get to do this. We wake up like two months later, I'm taking the suit to the dry cleaner and I look inside and the envelope was still in there. Nice. So I send it to them immediately. Good thing you have a little grace period. but Yeah, you get it. Wait, it's a year. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, you. I don't want to get remarried. Of course, I love my wife, but I would like somebody what? to pay my bills. Yeah. Is there where else? Like, yeah. just invite all the all of us from the radio station. Just like, what'd you contribute to? It's like, well, Perloff's four hundred one k. This is what I wanted. Have a party for the new time slot. Make a registry. We move to six a.m. Buy us things. You know, like a waffle iron, <laughs> some cash, oh, a that coffee is a, machine. The single dumbest. Has anybody ever used a waffle iron more than twice in the yes, history of me. waffle iron? I, I get it. Yeah, no waffle iron. A hundred percent. At a hotel. You guys oh, are actually God. using waffle iron? Yeah. I get them. There's been a waffle iron sitting in my drawer forever. I can't believe you guys use them. That I have is two of them. I have two sizes. What? Yeah. Waffle irons are awesome. Wait, Agreed. what are you like serving brunch at your house? No, we do <laughs> like a holiday in. A lot of yeah. Sundays we make we make like a family breakfast and the waffle iron comes down. We yeah. have like the traditional one, the big Belgian waffle one, and then at my wife stumbled upon like a tiny one that makes like ego ego sized ones. So do you live in a double tree hotel? What is going <laughs> yeah, on? Come here? on over. Are more cookies over there. <laughs> and EJ, you use a waffle iron too. You're, you're yeah, you both. Me and Mike, both. Well, I think that was one of my. My, one of my early gifts to my girlfriend when we first started dating. And now, of course, you know, we have the waffle iron together and we, we both use it. Yeah. How I, often do you make waffles? Uh, Every month, maybe. You know, you know, we got to have breakfast together. You know, she does yoga and teaching in the morning. So sometimes when I'm on the weekend, I'm not, you know, we're not together. But yeah. we have a weekend morning together. We pull it out quite often. In fact, we thought it was a popular gift. So what happened was <laughs> oh, no. we, for our birthday, we gave it to a friend of mine. My my uh, my girlfriend wanted to give my friend a, a birthday gift. And he got the waffle iron and he used it as a George Foreman hamburger maker. Because <laughs> he thought that would be way more interesting than using it as a waffle maker. And needless to say, my girlfriend was very upset when she learned this is how her waffle iron was being used. Well, well I want to hear more about these waffle iron hamburgers. Those yeah. sound delicious. Well, also, congrats to EJ for threading the needle of buying your girlfriend some obviously domestic, like, you know, a, you like a, appliance yeah. and living to see the other side of it. Like, that's <laughs> it amazing. Is, no, I made it to the other side, right? It's like, here's thought? a vacuum. Get in there. Yeah. I mean, this is not that's not an easy thing to pull off. Most men, you know, that's 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 tough. Uh, but a high quality vacuum is well worth the money. I do love a good vacuum. Oh, yeah. uh, but you guys got to be careful, Bogus and EJ. Maggie and I are going to show up at your house on Sunday morning <laughs> and be like, where are the waffles? It's like, hey, we brought the maple syrup. As long as it's not football season and I'm not working on Iron Football, you guys are more than welcome. <laughs> Sorry, just leave the waffle maker for us. We'll take it from there. <laughs> Not really. No, I don't really want to use the waffle maker. I want EJ to make the waffles. <laughs> do we even have time for headlines? Bogus. We do. Hit us. Uh, what an honor for Diamondbacks A Zach Gallen starting game one of the NLCS near his hometown. Zach Gallen, this being his former home. He grew up in New Jersey, and the first pitch is blasted deep to right, and Kyle Schwarber has arrived. 
A leadoff home run on the first pitch from Zach Gallen. Yeah, that didn't go well. Oh, uh, Bryce Harper and Nick Castellanos also took Gallen deep. He was charged with five runs on eight hits over five. My stuff was coming out pretty good. Just maybe some, you know, missed spots. Um, just lack of execution. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you know, they did their job. They executed their plan pretty well. The Diamondbacks losing for the first time in six postseason games, 5-3. Merrill Kelly starts game two at 8.07 Eastern. It was a 5-4 Rangers win in Houston for a 2-0 lead in the ALCS. Texas now 7-0 this postseason. Nathan Evaldi struck out 9 over 6. The best play Dak Prescott made on Monday Night Football, not a touchdown. There was a whirling escape from the pocket, throwing on the run to Tony Pollard, who took the ball 60 yards. As I got out, I saw, you know, some some grass in front of me to potentially run, but always just trying to keep my eyes downfield, look back, looking for a tight end or receiver coming across, and here comes Tony out of the backfield and uh, threw it to him, and then he went and got a lot more than, than, than the play that I made. The drive ended with a Brandon Cooks TD for a 17-10 fourth quarter lead. The Chargers got even, so Dak drove for Brandon Aubrey's 39-yard field goal with 219 left. Then the D ended the game with a Micah Parsons sack and a Stephon Gilmore interception. The 2017 final improved Dallas to 10-1 and after a loss over the last three seasons. The Niners still waiting on MRI results on Christian McCaffrey's side injury. Debo Samuel, Trent Williams are day-to-day with their injuries from Sunday's loss in Cleveland. They play in Minnesota on Monday night. Wait, sorry, I just thought of something really quick. What's more impressive, the 10-1 and one after a loss stat mm-hmm. that Bogus read about the Cowboys or whatever Andy Reid's record after, after a bye? A, uh, definitely Andy Reid. He's been doing it longer. And the 10-1, and one, I don't care what you are, what are you doing in the playoffs? That's the, always the rap okay, on Mike but McCarthy. Ten, but 10-1 and one eh. after a loss is pretty good. I mean, yeah. that's resilient. Not stacking losses is a good, is a good trick to have. Because right. two can become but three. You, you guys think that's more impressive than Andy Reid being the greatest off the bye coach in the history of the NFL? But you get like an extra week, so in yeah. theory, you should be really good right. off the bye, right? Exactly. No, but he's way better than everybody else. Like, yeah. even better than Belgium. All right, we'll think about that. Uh, ben Simmons, eight points, six rebounds, nine assists in the Nets, 127 119 preseason loss to the Sixers. Magic assistant Nate Tibbetts expected to become the next head coach of the Phoenix Mercury. He's also expected to become the highest paid coach ever in the WNBA. And on ice, the Sex Panthers held off the Devils 4 <laughs> 3, and the Rangers made the Coyotes howl with a 2 1 win. At the Garden. Guys, back to you. Thank but, you. By the way, you see that Bogus called it a side injury with Christian McCaffrey. Just say oblique. We all know what oblique well, they is. Well, they threw rib in there yesterday, too. Okay. So sides all encompassing. And what, I, actually, I'm kidding because I always read oblique injury, and I still don't know what, where an oblique is. I know it's somewhere I think in it's the, like here, right? on the right of your ribs, right? It's, you're doing crunches, bicycle crunches. I think you're getting the obliques. Yeah. It's like here. Okay. Yeah, I think it's I just pointed to myself back. on radio, which is awesome. Theater of the mind. Uh, you thank you, Bogish, no- also for sending us an article yeah. from ESPN highlighting Brock Purdy uh, mm. success against zone coverage versus man. So, Without Christian McCaffrey, that's the key. McCaffrey's break, break the missing down. piece. Yep. I was helping you, Maggie, against this guy. Yeah, I know. Thank yeah, you just kind of like when you read the Sixers win the preseason game, but Ben Simmons has four <laughs> assists what or whatever. You know, you can't. Build every sports update in an anti Philadelphia way. That's not anti Philadelphia. Sometimes where Philadelphia that's, teams don't even play. That's Wait. the news. MB didn't play. <laughs> Harden didn't play. The good Nets didn't play. Ben Simmons looking great again in True. the preseason. Oh. That's what matters. Oh. I was going to say oh. that Bogus oh. can't. I mean, that's what he's been doing since oh. he took over the job. <laughs> well, he's on can, week three. I'll tell you, if you're counting on Ben Simmons for good games, you're not going to get a lot. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Andrew Bogus. Let's go quickly to Sean, who's in Oregon. He's got a thought on Perloff's parking situation. He's already gotten two tickets since we started the morning show. Hey, Sean. Good morning, you guys. I just turned on the radio this morning, and I couldn't believe to hear that Mr. Perloff did not negotiate parking with his morning program. Like, whenever you get a job, whenever you do that, let this be a lesson to anybody. Always negotiate parking. Mm. Sean Oregon doesn't pay for parking. <laughs> Sean, but you, Sean, you've done well for yourself. We know from uh, what you used to call the afternoon show that you're always negotiating perks. Well, you got to. That's that's the part of you know when when yeah, you, uh, you know they can only give you so much money, you know. So you got to have the perks after that because it don't look good on paper. Um, and I just got a parking ticket up in Seattle when I went up to see the Mariners play the Dodgers. And, you know, parking was $40, and the parking ticket was $40. Oh. So it was, a, it was a gamble. Yeah. 
And you, yeah, well, I mean, you come out, I guess, kind of even there. You would have paid the 40 bucks anyway. It's just a bummer to get the ticket. Sean, thanks for checking in, dude. Good to talk to you. Yeah, I mean, maybe you can negotiate some other perks. Like, what else do you have around here? I gotta tell you, forget all that. Do you realize that there's about to become congestion pricing in New York? They've upped the parking, they've upped the tolls. It's gonna cost like forty five dollars for me to go six blocks into Manhattan. I know. You can also get like a ten dollar Uber. Yeah, the Uber is gonna have to pay the congestion pricing, so that's a seven dollar tab on top of the Uber. So I, I'm thinking I might have to go back to the subway. Does the subway run at four in the morning? What about jogging? You do love to jog. Mm, it's too too cold and dark. You got a cap. He likes to bike in. Oh, yeah. As I talked about him yesterday. Yeah, talked biking. Yesterday. Now that's a real option. That is a real Get option. A workout. Are you a bike? Are you a cyclist? Uh, do I, you own I a ride. Bike? I ride home. No city bike. I ride home sometimes for sure. Okay. It's pretty easy. I mean, I'd be kind of sweaty. And what about bad weather? I'm like Brock Purdy. I'd <laughs> prefer to keep it dry. <laughs> you know, it'd be even greater if this place was in the suburbs like everywhere else and we could just have a, a parking, lot? parking lot. Yeah, it doesn't happen around What a here. concept. 855-212-4CBS. Check in on the most interesting man in the NFL next. Don't move. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One 
one minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Welcome back to Maggie and Perloff. New morning show here on CBS Sports Radio. We are still all getting adjusted to the new time. Doing quite well, I would say. Except for Perloff's parking tickets that he keeps accruing. Well, I got to be honest. I was got a few of those before we switched on. So. <laughs> I can't exactly just blame I, the new time slot. I'm a very lazy driver in New York City. You're not supposed to be. The city is designed for public transit. But when you have kids, you know, got the 2018 Honda Accord Hybrid. I mean, I gotta use that. Yeah, puppy. you gotta unload. Yeah, let I mean, that I gotta air it out. I gotta show off that I call it the silver bullet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of which, EJ, our breakfast is here. So, let's get to the most interesting man in the NFL. Hit it. What the f- is Aaron Rodgers up to today? By the way, Maggie, that came off as a little like uh, what. Like, uh, my breakfast is here. It's EJ's breakfast, too. It's Pete's <laughs> breakfast, too. We all got the breakfast I just want to say, that's in. not how it is. Uh, go get my breakfast. <laughs> no, well, here, I said, I told EJ. Very diva-like value there, Maggie. Oh, my gosh. No, way. <laughs> I said, EJ, if I put the breakfast order in, I'm gonna ha- you're going to have to go get it. Do you mind? Goes, I understand oh, yeah, not all that. At all. I just want the audience to understand that it ca- kind of came off like a little, I don't know, a little Taylor Swift well, caper. <laughs> Bloody, you know what I'm talking about. Hold on. Yeah, uh, <laughs> He's hiding because he got some little preference. Wait, right. hold on. Bilotti's oatmeal's in there. EJ Cinnamon Raisin Bagel with cream cheese is in there. My egg sandwich is in there. Hold on. Pete, I'm going to have to ask you, yes. while we talk about Aaron Rodgers, to go back to the tape. Did I say my breakfast is here or did I say the breakfast is here? I think it was the. Thank you. And your coffee, Pearl Uh Pete, can you go grab me uh, my mimosa? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. My is there. I told you. The only reason I'm giving you a hard time is because that was totally a team order for breakfast. It's just the way you said it kind of came off like, oh, no, I don't want people to think Maggie is like. I'm ordering people around. Yeah, uh, my, my breakfast. breakfast is here. <laughs> it's like I told you I get farty and bloated with this yeah. latte. No, Maggie has no diva in her. I just want to make that clear to everybody <laughs> that here. Was more that, just sounded, that just sounded like kind of funny there. Okay, the guy's called twice, so I hope EJ gets out there quickly. <laughs> you want to take a break to call EJ also, cell and say, hurry up, get my breakfast. We got to make it snappy. Um, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Not doing much today as far as we know, but here was Robert Sala, his head coach, talking about his presence is his superpower. His superpower is his presence. Um and him being in this building, being around his teammates, being in the locker room, his his positive attitude, the, uh, his his thoughts of manifestation and all that stuff, I think it's powerful. And uh, so obviously as a coach, of course, selfishly, I want him here every single day. I want him in every meeting. I want him on the practice field. I want him on the sideline. I want him in the locker room selfishly because he's, uh, he's an unbelievable human. I mean, that's quite a superpower. It's also the side effects of microdosing mushrooms. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> no. uh, just kidding about that. We know that Rogers also on the headset uh, for the Jets now is influential yeah. in the play calling. I mean, can Rogers really provide all of that just I mean, from his mere presence in the building? This has been such an incredible six and zero run, and I can't. <laughs> do they get rings for what the Jets have done this year? Because they're so amazing, <laughs> and with this superpower. Uh, it's funny because it's, I also seem they're a three and three team who's won their three wins by like a hair. Uh, I don't know. I just feel like this is just more more hype, more hysteria around Aaron Rodgers. He's not really coming back. Is he coming back, Maggie? Tell I me, s- just 
break it to me because I can't handle this. I'm starting to think he really is. Uh, Pete, can we also hear from Richard Sherman? So this is the Richard Sherman podcast. So this is, you know, one of his own brethren here, shocked by how fast his recovery has been. I don't know what Aaron's doing. I don't know what he's doing because he's six weeks out of surgery and he's out there playing catch, throwing, and pushing off the, the surgically repaired foot. Whoa, whoa. I've never seen nothing like it. I, at six weeks after surgery, I was still I was still on a scooter. I was not throwing playing catch or anything. So it's 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 definitely encouraging, and I'm sure his teammates are seeing it and finding some encouragement. I don't know if he's doing that on purpose, but man, he's giving those guys hope, and they're giving the, the Jets fans a lot of hope. What's Richard Sherman alleging there? Just how shocked he is, right? Oh, I didn't I didn't hear it as an allegation, but now that you say that, maybe. No, I mean, it's not outright, nothing, like, you know, just like he explained his own recovery. Yep. He was not even anywhere close to this, but maybe he wasn't attacking the rehab like Rodgers is. So how's this going to work? Aaron Rodgers is going to come out at week 15 or something and play? I think so. I think it's probably going to start with, you know, him getting on the injury report, maybe. Okay. In some ways, it's going to be, like, questionable. And then I, I think you see a couple snaps. I don't know. How's he going to hold up for this little little back-to-back here? Sunday, December 24th, Washington. It's in the Jets. And you know they got pass rushers. Then a short week at Cleveland. Are you honestly going to put Aaron Rodgers on one leg out against Cleveland? <laughs> don't in do Cleveland? That. No, don't Maybe do just that. put Let's Zach Wilson. Wilson that one. So yeah. even if he comes back, that's even more complicated because you don't know what kind of Aaron Rodgers you're getting. And if you're in the playoff race, that means that you're winning games with Zach Wilson. This is going to be, there's a lot of tentacles to what could happen here. Okay, winning games with Zach Wilson, though, is that because of Zach Wilson or in spite of Zach Wilson? Like, that part to me is not sticky. The part about whether you put him out there and he gets hurt again, that I think for for the Jets to win games, you're going to have to have Zach Wilson moving around a lot. And the thing is, Aaron Rodgers behind this line isn't going to be able to move. So I'm not even sure how it's necessarily going to be this giant upgrade could be a bad situation like he could come out there and be a sitting duck he could be but i think any upgrade from zach wilson right but uh, not if they're if they're six and four with zach wilson then something's working the defense I'm, yeah but <laughs> defense. but he's doing enough for them to win coming up what do we learn from last night's cowboys win over the chargers we'll tell you don't move maggie and perloff cbs sports radio You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining.
Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. a violin prodigy. Her full name is Maggie the Stallion. They are Maggie and Perloff on CBS Sports Radio. Cowboys can exhale. They get a win going into their bye, get a little of the heat off their backs. It was only last week, Perloff, that they lost badly to the 49ers in a sort of litmus test game that they just could not be competitive in. So another loss would have been just even worse for the Cowboys. Instead, get a little get a little reprieve yeah. by beating the Chargers on the road. Well, they come back with a must-win game against the Rams. <laughs> Every game's a must-win. Must <laughs> I mean, this is the Dallas Cowboys. Everything's a must-win. This is a big win. If they had lost, I, I'm just saying, it would have been okay. Because they could have lost that game. It came down to the last drive with Justin Herbert. They would have been 3-3. Three and three. They're going to pick off some easy NFC wins anyway. Here's my problem with the Cowboys. Like, Are we seeing anything different than the team that's fallen short in the playoffs year in and year out? It just feels like the offensive... It feels like they're stuck in quicksand a little bit. They're not moving like they did last year with Kellen Moore. They're going to have to win with defense. Listen, the offense was not like so super impressive last night, of course, but they did enough to get it done. And Dak Prescott moving his feet, Pearl off, that was the best part. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that he stays healthy, Meg. Um, oh, sorry. Uh, Maggie is completing her breakfast order. I'm going to vamp for a second here. So we're having a. Debate. Oh, hold on. Turn on her mic. I want to hear this. <laughs> You're on the 12th floor? Okay. We're on the 10th floor. Yeah. Okay. So you need someone to come get you on the 12th floor? Wait. Do we have access okay, to the 12th floor? Okay. Come to the 10th floor. floor. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Pete. Can we also do an on-air production meeting? Can you please call EJ and tell him that the guy's lost in the building? <laughs> First of all, 
I thought the security around here was like airtight. Normally, the people who are delivering food, they don't get past the lobby. Why is this guy lost on the 12th floor? By the way, we can't get to the 12th floor. That's totally locked off it's from It's Google us. up there. I yeah. don't know how anyone gets to the 12th floor. I mean, he, EJ's got to beat the guy on the 10th floor. This is beyond embarrassing. This is the worst moment we've ever had. Okay. Back to sports. We're talking about Cowboys, Chargers. Yeah. Forget that. <laughs> I want to get in the what MVP. I want to just immediately take a left turn to the MVP debate because we were talking about. Was there anyone playing in the game last night who was worthy of Dak an MVP? Is a, Dak Definitely had all not. his interceptions yeah. last night. Justin Herbert's stats are unbelievable, but he's not going to be in it because they're not going to be a winning team. So this is such a weird year, the MVPs. Because you look at the candidates, is it the Tyreek Hill wide receiver win an MVP? Because there, is there any quarterback who's so far ahead of the other quarterbacks that he's going to win the MVP? I think think that Tua is probably ahead of him. If Tua, because this is such a quarterback award lately with the MVP, if Tua stays healthy, the numbers that Tua's putting up are great, phenomenal. Uh, he will win it if it because if it if it continues like this. And then the Dolphins would have a huge question, which is, do you pay Tua and give him this massive contract if he's able to stay healthy for one season? But a related question, though, does anybody think that the real superpower on that team is Tua? They all, we all think it's Tyreek Hill. Yeah, but I mean, if Brock Purdy can get in the MVP discussion, why wouldn't Tua be able to get into it? Well, I mean, here's the other thing. They if, both if, have great supporting say, casts and good defenses. Say that Purdy, you know, he's got some tough defenses he's coming up against, but say his numbers continue like this. Is it in McCaffrey the MVP? I mean, I think we all know that, yes, McCaffrey is the MVP, but won't they give it to the quarterback? That just it seems to be generally how this award is working. I just think this year is different because you don't really have a Patrick Mahomes. So Tyreek Hill's on pace for 2,306 yards, obviously an NFL record. You have the extra game. Yep. He is the most uncoverable player in the NFL. The dude did a flip with a camera. I think this, <laughs> Do you think that adds or takes away? Adds for sure. I know the NFL find him, but everyone loves it. Yeah. I just think this, this year might be the breakthrough year that a wide receiver finally wins it. Cooper Cup was in the running the other year with the yeah. Rams. But Tyree Kill is he's Cooper Cup is a system guy, Sean McVay. There's nothing system about Tyree Kill. He's just totally uncoverable. My Eagles play him on Sunday night. I have no idea what the strategy is. You can't give him too much room in front. You certainly can't let him behind you. There's just no stopping this guy. So I think we're starting to see the beginning of a possibility of a break in the trend of quarterbacks. With a wide receiver, first one ever, I believe. Listen, he would have to like obliterate the record, which I know he's on pace to break it by like over 200 yards or something like yeah. that. Again, you said mention the extra game. The extra game. But he, I think he would have to like, you're not only fighting against other people who are putting together good seasons, you're fighting against like the system, if you will. Yeah. Which has never rewarded quarterbacks. Dude, the guy's still lost in the building. Oh, geez. Am I picking up the phone again? Yeah, pick up the phone. Okay. I told him. Hello? So, Blatty, did you know that there's never been a wide receiver to win the MVP? That's so, that's surprising. You would think maybe in, like, the 80s or 70s you'd get one. Okay. This is so Any luck? The rails. Yes, he's here. I don't know. I, th this is going to end with this dude being our boss or something. Like, they're going to come in. They're going to give him an office. How did he get up here? I have or no a idea. candid camera. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Let me give you a couple other candidates. You like the Lions? How about Jared Goff? That would be wild. What if Jared Goff won the MVP? How about Jared Goff? I was thinking about this. Jared Goff, if they get to the Super Bowl as a two-time Super Bowl quarterback. Yeah, could happen. I mean, they probably have the number one seed. Uh, I, I think they need a couple of injuries in San Francisco <laughs> to do that. But. but I'm thinking about it, though, beyond, like, we talk about guys who could yeah. be getting in the Hall of Fame. Like, you think Matthew Stafford get in the Hall of Fame. Great chance. Ryan, uh, Matt Ryan, you know, guys like this. Less, yeah, mixed chance. Okay, but Phillip like, Rivers. Philip Rivers, if you, if golf continues to put up numbers because it's yeah. like a video game now and you have the extra game and he would have gone to the Super Bowl twice. Yeah, but don't you have to win it twice? I don't know. I mean, Philip Rivers could get in without winning it at all, without he, even playing in the game. Yeah, but Philip Rivers has like 11 Pro Bowl appearances. Goff now has three. He has 2017, 2018, 2022, and he's about to turn 30. Actually, he just turned 29. Okay, so, but who's key? You know, he's just a chance, as good a chance as anyone else in the NFC of making the Pro Bowl. Doesn't he? I mean, oh, he's he's Jalen Hurts and Purdy and so Dak. Who else are you really Four time Pro Bowl, with? but Rivers, I think, is 10 times. He's still got a while to go. Anyway, yeah, that is wild to think of Jared Goff. I think there's two things are crazy. Tua to be the MVP, that's pretty wild to me. Jared Goff to be MVP is wild. But I, I honestly think anybody with common sense looks at the Dolphins, the MVP of that team is Tyreek Hill. 
So how can the MVP of the team not be the MVP of the league? Same with Christian McCaffrey and the Niners. I, I'm just telling you what I've seen all these yeah. years, which is Can't they the never system. give it to the wide receiver or the running. Well, the running backs they used to give it to. Yeah, I th- I think this year could be the first time in a long time. Is I've there been, anyone else in the running? Well, I mean, listen, Brock Purdy is probably, I think he fell, but he could bounce back. Mahomes is having, they're not going to give it to Mahomes, right? He's got to be Herculean to do anything. Listen, you never know because I think Mahomes is like the default candidate. It's like, well, if no one's having a great year, Mahomes is definitely the best player oh, in the and, league. Oh, uh, your guy, Josh Allen. I think voters want to reward Josh Allen for having an excellent career. How about how about him this oh, year? Oh, Lifetime Achievement Award? Um, He's third in odds, Josh Allen, right now. Well, not if they keep playing like they did uh, against the Giants. Oh, one more. Lamar Jackson, who's starting to pick up his passing game a lot. I think Lamar could be possible, but to be a two-time, do you have to... Like be even better, which is is a long season. Anyway, yeah, going back, I, I totally agree with what you just said. They're not. <laughs> he has to be amazing. It's amazing together. to yeah. be a two time. Uh, going back to last night, so you do have Dak Prescott in a big spot. One of the great things that he did was started to move his legs, use his legs rather as a weapon, which is something we saw through the first part of Dak Prescott's career a lot. Then he started to get injuries, and it started to build up. And you saw him become a little bit more of a like less less of less of a risk taker, if you will. And last night, you saw this other element of it. Is it sustainable? I don't know. But man, does it make the Cowboys' offense look a lot better? Ooh, but last night was tough, though, right? I mean, that's not the Cowboys. That's not the offense they want. I'm assuming you guys score more than twenty points. I maybe I came in. Did you expect a, a huge offensive app? Two of the best offenses in the league last night. Yeah, and it was it was a real slog. I know, but here's the thing. I think you got to also be in the game you're in, right? Which is Dak's legs were a weapon because they happened to be in this slog of a game. Yeah. You got to throw out whatever you thought was going to happen. What actually happened was. Points were at a premium last night, and you had to be in this like dogfight of a game that was a little grittier, I think, than people believed. And the referees were just muddying the whole thing up with the, you know, whatever, 20 penalties that were called in the game. Absolutely. But I do look at this offense, and it, much like the Chargers, like it's just not easy. Like last no, night was not, not easy. easy. I mean, CeeDee Lamb had a lot of easy catches, though, for 117 yards. That part looked easy. I just worry about Mike McCarthy. Uh, I just don't, I don't think he's really kind of caught up with the modern offense. feels like he's running a 2012 offense, yeah. not a 2023 offense. Watch the, watch the Dolphins, all the pre-snap movement and all the stuff going on. The Cowboys don't really have much of that at all. Yeah, they're calling what Mike McDaniel's doing like revolutionary, though. Yeah. And I don't think anyone's going to put Mike McCarthy and revolutionary in the same sentence in this day and age. Yeah, it just doesn't. Also, where were the explosive plays, really? They had... The 60-yard pass to Pollard, which was all his running, was their longest play of the year. Yeah. You said that earlier. There's just not – the offense is – it's just too hard. They need some explosive plays. They need Dak to be able to throw along. Brandon Cook's got a touchdown last night, but did you expect a little more from him? Yeah, but maybe that's on us. Maybe that's our bad. Why? That guy's produced everywhere. Yeah, but he's also been everywhere. Like, there's got to be a reason that he keeps going from team to team. What did Joe Buck say? He caught his uh, touchdown for the fifth different team? That's yeah, but crazy. He, he's there for one reason, to provide some sort of deep threat to make things underneath a little easier, and he hasn't done it so far. The other thing, the first half, the storyline, Michael Gallup, what are you doing? Oh, they I were know. trying to get Gallup involved, and he just was not helping out Dak at all. No, it, they were clearly not on the same page, and I believe at one point he was like one for six, like one catch for six targets. Yeah. He ended up catching a, a pass on the final drive. Uh, of the first half, which Mike McCarthy ends up botching essentially because they had like nine seconds and they were at the 14 yard line, definitely enough to be able to run a play to try to get a touchdown right before the half. And instead he let the game Mm -hmm. clock go. He does not want to use a timeout. Let the clock go down to three seconds and kick the field goal. One note on Brandon Cooks for his career, 13.6 yards per catch. Last year, even in Houston, 12.3, he's at 8.4 yards per catch. There is no scaring the defense right now with them. They, their, offense, their defense is amazing. If they're going to win a Super Bowl, as you predicted, it's going to be the defense, Maggie. they got to keep the, the games conservative. But listen, McCarthy is a play caller. It's, it's, it's not wowing me right now. No, but the defense against one of the better quarterbacks in Justin Herbert, although I thought he left a bit to be desired, especially on that final drive, a lot to be desired. Uh, but let's listen to Mike McCarthy. Pete, can we play cut number 11, please? Um, says the season really been up and down. It's a good win, good road win. You know, we've had four on the road out of six games. 
you know, we split, um, you know, we're, we're four and two, uh, we're at the bye. It's been, um, it's been a little bit, a little bit, it's been a roller coaster ride as, as far as how we've performed in our productivity, uh, in six weeks. Um, so we get, we get a chance to re- reset, reboot, uh, hopefully we come out of the game relatively healthy and, um, get back at it for the Rams. <coughs> Listen, why I think this is good is no nobody thinks the Chargers is an awesome team, but they're definitely not a bad team, okay? And the Cowboys previously had big wins over teams. No offense to the Jets. I know that they have a big win over Philly, but I don't think anyone's classifying the Jets as like a great team. The Giants are a terrible team, and New England's a terrible team. So they didn't have like, you know, a signature win. I'm not saying this is it, but at least it's against a team that's better than the three that I mentioned. Yeah, better than New but, England, better than the Jets, better than the Giants. Honestly, I look at the Chargers. I'd be surprised if they have a winning record this year. They're probably going to end up below 500. They just, they're just uninspired. That is true. From start to finish. I think part of that is everyone knows Brandon Staley is is probably done. I would imagine. Now the yeah. question is, who would be the the right person to take over that job? EJ, we put a poll up about whether Bill Belichick should take over the Chargers. What are the results of the poll? So looking at the poll here, give me a one second. I gotta circle back after this wild. Did we ever ride find the breakfast does that, elevator? Does the guy um, who delivered the breakfast was, uh, does he work great. here? Now? The poll results right now. We got okay. Chargers hiring Bill Belichick. So forty five percent say yes, fifty four percent say no. Interesting. It's close. So does the guy who delivered the breakfast he works here now? <laughs> he has an office now. <laughs> uh, he might as well. I mean, the fact that he was able to get. I mean, I feel like I was in Spider Man. Across the Spider Verse, trying to find <laughs> Spot. If you've ever seen that movie, where Spot's going to different dimensions. I mean, I've been on probably four or five floors. I, I think I've seen different dimensions. I saw <laughs> a alternate Maggie and Pearl off, where you know Maggie was the male and Andrew was the female. I mean, I feel like I've just seen everything. You've seen too much. Now. Yes, I, I've seen the world now. Just trying to find the S in breakfast. Maggie has no idea what you're talking about. She does not know about <laughs> the multiverse, the Spider Verse. No, but I get what he. I'm picking up what EJ's putting down. I mean, the other part is I can't believe he got to a Google floor. He got to a Google floor. He got to an Odyssey floor, apparently, uh, and then he was just chilling in in the elevator, in in the in not even in the elevator lobby, in the like in the freight elevator section, which only what? is one door, and you have access to everything here. How did he get in the freight elevator? I, look, he clearly maybe he's on some John Wick, Tom Clancy <laughs> type. I mean, he needs to be you know in those movies or writing those movies because impressive job because there's quite a lot of security in this building. Dude, this this dude just like he you know like you got to test the perimeter like yeah. whenever you're trying to see where your weak points are. This guy just infiltrated the building. It's more like the movie Ricochet <laughs> than anything else. <laughs> uh, he's a corporate spy. What's Ricochet? Sorry, uh, that was uh, John Lithgow. <laughs> Uh, where he was a uh, criminal. <laughs> John Lithgow, our most, our most hardened criminal. John Lithgow. What Third year was Ricochet? Oh, that was probably the 90s, mid-90s. 91. 90s. Yeah. Does anyone else have this with uh, the type of TV that we have? It's constantly feeding us like movie suggestions, and they're all from the 90s. It's like, have you watched Sandra Bullock in the net? <laughs> like, what? Right. No, I haven't, and I'm not going to now. Well, I'm going to watch Ricochet. Early... Sounds awesome. I'm looking at Denzel Washington and John Lithgow. Sign me up. <laughs> Anyone seen Equalizer good. 3 yet, by the way? I'm on the verge of renting it. I heard it's awesome. I've not seen Equalizer 1. <laughs> I really? haven't either, but everyone says <laughs> Equalizer 3 is one of the best movies of the year. And I, you get on me because I like sequels. You're going to jump in on Equalizer 3 expecting a good movie? I heard it. I heard Equalizer 3 is outstanding. See, I'm a sequel fundamentalist. It's very hard for me if I've not watched the earlier movies to just jump in and like... You know, I got to tell you. Fundamentalist? <laughs> wow. Yeah, no, my friends it's keep hard like... Stance. They've been hounding me on like, you got to see the next John Wick. I'm like, I've never seen the first John Wick. Like, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm like, yes, it does. It for does Equalizer for and John Wick, it does not matter. It definitely doesn't matter. There's no because... plot. They just kill everybody. <laughs> no, but I I, I want to see the story threads. I want to see they how they the don't story have them. Yeah, my, I don't, my... it, it's like you can't see Kickboxer two if you haven't seen Kickboxer one. I think you're gonna be okay. Well, you know what's an issue? My yeah, wife Marvel rented uh, Mission Impossible last night. Do you need to see all the Mission Impossibles? Because they don't really have a story thread that goes through. They kind of reset every time. That's another one where my parents friends keep saying, oh, I've never seen a Mission Impossible movie. They're like, oh, you got to see Mission Impossible. The next, you know, Tom Cruise movie. My dad loves these movies. And I'm like, 
I, I, I want. I, and my thing is, I'm not afraid to do hmm. the ten movie marathon. I'm not. I'm not ducking that smoke. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I need time. <laughs> People gotta relax. Like, I'm not gonna just jump to the eighth movie in a franchise. No, you got it wrong because you can't to see a James Bond movie. You can't see the 35 that came before it, and there's no need to. There's no plot thread. There's no relationships that carry from one movie to the next. Yeah, he's sleeping with different women in every. Yeah, same with Mission yeah. Impossible. There's no common. Yeah, they're the same actors, but they reset the plot every time. You're fine. Oh, I can't do it. And by the way, it's the same plot every time. Every <laughs> yeah, Mission Impossible like, movie. Reset the plot? How? It's like, is this a, an excuse for Tom Cruise to jump out of an airplane? Yeah, yeah, that? no, basically. <laughs> and then tell us about it. Yeah, it's like the the American government is betraying Tom Cruise and they end up on the same page. I just told you what happened in all the other movies. <laughs> Jeez, Sorry. Well, spoiler. You gotta, you gotta alert us before you divulge. <laughs> Was that too much? I'm just kidding. Have you ever seen Mission Impossible? How have you not seen Mission Impossible 1? I've never, I just, I've never seen it. I mean... It's not like a young thing because I'm 32. Like, I feel like a lot of people my age have seen at least some Mission Impossible movies, but yeah. just not something that, like, you would think a young man who loves, like, action stuff. I don't know. Just never, I never, never jumped to my thing or something just I want to do. Just admit it. You hate Tom Cruise. Yeah. No, hate- I actually don't mind Tom Cruise. <laughs> I, I don't. Like, it's, I've told, like, you know, he seems to be a thrill guy. I don't know. Did you need to see Top Gun 1 to enjoy Top Gun 2? I don't really think so. I mean, there were a lot of things planted in there. Yeah. Like, it was a homage because you're talking about, yeah. you know, Goose and his kid. Um, have you guys taken the opportunity to make fun of Maggie for liking Caddyshack 2? <laughs> oh, Perloff, you're just spilling my <laughs> secrets. <laughs> oh, come on, the morning show needs to know. <laughs> Maggie, Maggie's sense of humor was formed at nine years old, and <laughs> anything that came out when she was eight or nine was hysterical. That's abundantly clear to the audience. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <Clearly>. I, <laughs> and you're proud of it, as you should be. Now, I like Airplane 2. Oh, that's a that's an interesting that's one. That's a tough one. I've never seen that one. <laughs> that Way they, to admit that you... <laughs> they go to the moon. <laughs> of course they do. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the moon. That's all you need to know. Thank <laughs> but you. But I like it. I mean, I, I'm a sequel person. I, <laughs> I, I, I was born in the 80s. It was a yeah, big uh, sequel time. Yeah. Everyone was making money and cashing in. It was the height of greed. You know, a lot of Wall Street stuff going on in the 80s. People doing a lot of blow. <laughs> and they needed a money grab. <laughs> Speaking of which, okay. There's got to be a line, though. You could not possibly have liked Weekend at Bernie's, too. When yeah, they use the voodoo, voodoo, when they brought voodoo to bring Bernie Listen, back to it's life, it's a better idea. Than the dude's idea. been dead for two movies. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a better idea than going to the moon in Airplane Two. Yeah. No, Airplane Two, that was Tony Bono was in it. William Shatter showed up at the end in the space. It was a space shuttle. Yeah, about, Stryker decided to, to man the space shuttle. It was great. Hot Shots Part Two. That was pretty good. Hard shots, part duh. Pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. I didn't love um, Naked Gun. Naked all Gun three too. were. Oh, all three were perfect. They I only like amazing. the first one. I'm a purist when it comes to. What Naked was wrong Gun. with Naked Gun too? I don't remember what what happened. I don't remember Naked Gun too. I remember the first, the first one, and the third one. The third one was beyond bad. Anna Nicole Smith. Oh, it's just crazy. terrible. They the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> guy in the, in the guy in the production truck it was excellent. All right, what have we accomplished in this segment? I literally talked to the delivery guy on the air. Yeah. Oh, that happened on the air? I didn't yes. realize that. He wow, that's interesting. <laughs> yes, that, is, that was interesting. Let's hope that our boss wasn't listening to that. Uh, we've talked about my love of Caddyshack 2, and Pete topped it with Airplane 2. <laughs> we know that EJ's Airplane never... 2 is great, though. Caddyshack 2 is a disaster. Okay, watch it again. And then, <laughs> what else? We decided that Tyreek Hill should be the front runner for the MVP. I decided that. Okay. You uh, you disagree. I think it's still going to be two if he's healthy. Anyway, 855-212-4 CBS. We also talked about the Cowboys in that segment. We covered a lot of ground. Some would argue too much, but not us. Who's uh, EJ? Just knock that whole segment out of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> just, just cut that. Just cut it. That's Goodbye. Or maybe just Move blast. on to 920. We're good, <laughs> Eastern. It's so short today. I think you just blast that segment into the sun. Uh, okay, coming up, got a lot more to do, including, well, every day we check in on Deion Sanders. <laughs> what do you have to say today? We'll tell you. Don't move. Maggie and Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break. Four minutes, 30 seconds remaining.
four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Welcome back to Maggie and Perloff. I felt like the whole crew here was a little disappointed in me yesterday. I mean, correct? Sure. Because <laughs> you, feel that, yeah. you guys don't even need specifics. Yeah, no. Our bogus is here with the headline. Well, uh, <laughs> so I think everyone expected me to be crying because the Philadelphia Eagles lost to the New York Jets. Yeah. But I did not care because Jalen Hurts, who is my sort of unofficial mentor in the sports world, keeps on saying the same thing. You're either winning or you're learning. To me, the Eagles' loss was a matter of learning. I've been thinking more and more, 48 hours later, 
I'm glad they lost. I think that was a positive loss. Sometimes you need a wake-up call so the coaches can get in there and coach them up. They're getting complacent. I am flying high with my Eagles. Okay, you realize that he stole that from like Nelson Mandela or something. <laughs> like it did, Jalen Hurts didn't and, think it, didn't think it up. No, that's yes, a good person to steal from if you're fine, looking for inspiration. And I'm stealing it from him. So. <laughs> it's like like my mentor Jalen Hurts has said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to well, my own self be true. It's like what? <laughs> do you remember Bill Belichick every year like the the. Patriots to start out 3-0, and then he would mysteriously lose the fourth game just because you know that he just wanted a loss so he could get in there and yell at people. Listen, I just if, think it's if a he pro- had one more of those, maybe he'd be closer to Don Shula's record. The season is a process. <laughs> 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 the season is a process. Everybody overestimates one game. The Eagles are right where they need to be. That's what I'm telling myself yeah. because I play the Dolphins this week. But I am definitely not worried about an out-of-conference loss in Week 6. The Cowboys it was not a must-win game out-of-conference. There are must-win games coming up this season. You guys got to stop using that unless it's a Game 7 of the MLB playoffs. You feel the mm. guys in processes. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's I'm, about, also, I'm feeling so great for you that you feel good about your team that's 5-1. and one. Bogus, you got headlines for I us. Do, I do. You're, you're either asking. winning or you're learning. You're either winning or As you're Jaylen learning. As Jalen Hurts once famously said. Sure. <laughs> Bryce Harper. Well, why would Nelson Mandela say you're winning or learning? Because he was one of the most wise people to ever walk the earth, so he knew. Was he talking about rugby? I don't understand. Yeah, he's talking about life. <laughs> Bryce Harper is certainly good at baseball, but does he know his numbers? Harper cranked a home run on the first pitch he saw in game one of the NLCS last night on his 31st birthday. So Harper put up three fingers on one hand, one on the other as he got the home plate, then blew out the candles. To him, it looked like a 31. (laughs) To the rest of us, it looked like a 13. It's crazy. I just... Sometimes I just do stuff, and that, that felt uh, that felt right. So I thought I'd uh, step on home plate and, and do that. Um, but I just thought about it as I was running around third base. Harper also oh, had a guy. RBI single in the 5-3 series opening win. His team has now won its last 10 postseason games at home against NL opponents. D-back starter Zach Gallen charged with all five of those runs. Also taken deep last night by Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos. Can we get him to pee in a cup? Aaron Nola and Merrill <laughs> oh, Kelly on the mound <laughs> oh. for game two. Yeah, I'm sure the other <laughs> teams alive in the playoffs are clean. Get out of here. I mean, button a jersey up. We get it. Your kid's there. Stop hitting home runs. What a pig. The Five and three The Diamondbacks sure seem to be hitting the ball pretty hard, too, last night. They lost last night. So, no, they did not. So, when does... At what point in your life do you stop like making it a big deal about your birthday? Not trying to be a jerk here about Bryce Harper, but you're 31. I did think that was a little are odd. You big, are you guys He's, big birthday people? No. We're all getting He's, to know each other around Bryce here. Harper seemed overly enthusiastic. I agree with you. I'm like, who well, cares Well, so 30 that it's a is a big one, right? Yeah. 31, it's like, all right, now I'm, so, now I'm just in my 30s, which is great. 30s rocked. I loved my 30s. Yeah. I don't, I don't think birthdays are important. You like them? Okay. Yes, I think I feel they like are. Bryce Miles Harper is just sort of... He feels like he's got this weird kid-like quality, and I don't mean that necessarily as a compliment. It should sound like, like it's, <laughs> I don't think that sounds like a compliment. Yeah, no, it's good to have like that kid-like enthusiasm. It yeah. just strikes me as curious with Bryce Harper. Yeah, my first reaction live was not criticism. It was just jealousy that my team doesn't huh. have a player like that. Well, what did you think of when he did the throat sla- slash? Didn't uh, like the throat slash, or when he stared down the shortstop. If I'm, all of those things are fine and warranted, and he's allowed to do them except the throat slash. The throat slash to me is silly and I unnecessary. Kids are watching. I just we like it's a weak celebration. People. I totally agree. Yeah, I just it's, it's just also weird. played out fifteen years ago. That too. I think the kids are watching. Uh, part of it is is the big part. It's a fake me. tough guy thing too. Mm-hmm. It's just yeah, he's better. Everyone's better than that. My least favorite celebration is when a cornerback on first down <laughs> gets one pass defended, like and he's like celebrating, like crossing his hands like this. I'm like, you're about to get torched the next six plays. Not only that, when guys, I don't like over celebrating. When they celebrate drops, like you didn't contribute to the <laughs> drop. <laughs> That's the worst. Yeah. It's like clapping for a double fault. Right. Yeah. It's I also don't like the when you're trailing by two scores and the wide receiver comes up with a big catch and then like points like the first down. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, oh, got, oh, it's the worst. You got like, by three touchdowns. <laughs> you got like three to four more of those big catches just to get back in this game. <laughs> so I hustle on back to the line of scrimmage.
Uh, let me reset. The Phillies won last night 5-3. The Rangers oh. won game two in Houston 5-4 for a 2-0 lead in the ALCS. The Astros were down 5-2, bottom five, loaded the bases with nobody out, but Nathan Avaldi got the next three batters to escape. Max Scherzer back after five weeks with a shoulder injury. He starts game three tomorrow in Arlington. Get lost. It was a 2017 Cowboy win over the Chargers in L.A. on Monday Night Football. That means 25 teams scored 21 points or fewer in Week 6, the most in a single week ever. Brandon Staley accepts his team's role in that infamy. We're a work in progress, and um, this was a tough night against a good team, good good defensive unit, Um, but we we definitely did not play well enough at the line of scrimmage, and uh, we have to improve. His team only ran for 53 yards. Micah Parsons sacked Justin Herbert on the Chargers' last drive. Stephon Gilmore then picked Herbert off to seal the victory. Dak Prescott, happy to win the must win. I mean, it was huge for us to get to four and two. Um, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Had to be four and two heading into their bye. Prescott ran for a score and threw one to Brandon Cooks. Bills running back Damian Harris is now home after Sunday night scare, leaving the field in an ambulance. Harris diagnosed with a neck sprain and is in the league's concussion protocols. Colts rookie QB Anthony Richardson likely headed for shoulder surgery, likely done for the season. And Lions head coach Dan Campbell says they'll probably be without David Montgomery for, quote, a little bit after hurting his ribs in Sunday's win in Tampa. The Florida Panthers have their first win of the new hockey season. Here's Barkoff into the near circle. Out to Ekman Larson at the line. Backs up. Long shot tip. They score. And it's Sam Reinhardt on the power play. Got a stick on that. He got a stick on what? Uh, <laughs> behave yourself, Sam Reinhardt. He scored twice in a 4-3 win in Jersey. Chicago won in Toronto 4-1. But Connor Bedard held pointless for the first time in his four career games. Kevin Durant and Devin Booker each scored 19 in the Suns' 117 106 preseason win over the Blazers. Uh, and golf fans will know the voice, know the name Ivor Robson, the official starter for 41 Open Championships, introing the golfers on the first tee. He has passed away at the age of 83. Hmm. Guys, back to you. Well, that's sad, but forgive me. I'm not familiar with his work. Did he have like a signature call or he something? He has a, uh, not a signature call, but he has a kind of a high pitched um, and an interesting delivery in his announcements of on okay. the first tee Rory McIlroy uh, and it was oh it that was, sounds familiar I wasn't sure if it was like the guy who introduces the Pistons you know no, like, no no Detroit basketball that guy but he was always there and they always made a point of putting him on the air uh, okay when like the bigger players were starting their rounds gotcha. okay yeah. I got uh, good news for you by the way Bogus that uh-oh. Phillies bullpen is dying to give away a game I will the Phillies are losing tonight. Are they giving away four games though? That's the no. I don't think here. so. But okay. they definitely they they're won't. definitely losing tonight. I no. just I Sweet. would like to see. Can we continue sexually suggestive hockey highlights yeah. throughout <laughs> the entire season? Because I got to tell mean, you, it's gonna make, make me way more interested in the season. <laughs> so I'll do my best. Uh, I scanned all five or six games last night, yeah, and it's a heavy lift. Yeah. Maybe we can get the audience involved. Like, maybe they can yeah. help us a little. If you hear a sexually Oof. suggestive hockey highlight, send it Let to us. Yeah, that's a great idea. Like a bad beat for uh, Scott Van Pelt. You know, that's all user-generated. The yeah. second you said Florida Panthers, I'm like, or whatever team that was, I'm like, oh, there's no way he'd read this highlight. Like, there's something good in here. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. I know. This could be our new thing. Yeah, by the way, he mentioned Sam Reinhardt. Our celebrity picker last week, we have not talked about that. Bo, Bo Reinhardt, Reinhardt. Uh, founder of the band Need to Breathe. Do you know what he said uh, for his picks? He said the Browns are going to win on a bunch of Dustin Hopkins field goals in the bad weather. He did and, actually say and that. And that is exactly what happened. I know. That was, uh, sorry, the Reinhardt reminded me of that. That We forgot to give him his flowers for that. It was a dead-on prediction. How else did he do? Uh, he was dominant. I think. Uh, Man, this dude. All yeah. these country music stars, are, he's more like rock, like uh, uh, Christian he's rock, Christian I guess. rock, yeah, but, but he uh, lives in Nashville. He lives in Nashville, so he's like around it. I yeah. mean, these dudes yeah. are so good at evaluating sports. Like the Florida-Georgia line people, they're like, their analysis is spot on. <laughs> well, it's are like they LeBron. better than LeBron, though? That's the question. But LeBron's an athlete. Like these guys, <laughs> I think you get a lot of downtime when you're on tour. Right, you're on the bus, concert at night, you got time then, to break down film. Then you so got much time to watch First Take yeah. and like listen to every radio show in the world. <laughs> right, right. I want my Pey- damn respect, too. <laughs> Peyton Manning's hosting the CMAs again, so he's getting into country music, like the yeah. crossover. 
Now, I love, I, I want to see more of, I didn't watch much of the shop. Nobody told me it was on when they were doing the second screen for the NFL game. I, I'm very interested in LeBron as an NFL analyst. But do you realize, like, you're asking for something that, like, no one else is asking for? It's like, it's like asking for more Kelsey right. brothers, you know? It's like, no, we don't have enough Kelseys on TV. Let's put no. on a baseball game last night. I would rather hear anything than LeBron talking about the NBA right now. Well, I've him, heard that for years. Him, too. Like, he doesn't want to talk about the NBA either. He's clearly over that, and he's like, moved on to football. <laughs> His opinion on Anthony Davis means nothing. It's been five years of that. Yeah, I mean, listen, was it in his mind, was it must win for his Cowboys last night? <laughs> sure. I, I want to hear what he thought of the defense in that last drive. Yeah, let's have him on the show. Why not? Cool. Call LeBron. Somebody uh, book LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> he can't get on that. Hello? Um, yes, you would love LeBron because he's a fan of the Cowboys and the Browns, and you're a fan oh. of everyone on earth. And <laughs> Ohio State, and somehow he's gotten involved in Oregon, and yeah. there seems to be a little bit of, now as a USC fandom. His college is all over the place. You like the Phillies? <laughs> Probably. The one team he hates. But he's, <laughs> no, he's definitely waiting out to see who wins this Saturday with Ohio State, Penn State, to see if he's going to put that <laughs> Buckeye hat on or the Oregon hat or the USC hat. Thrifty is oh, in and the Dion. chat. Yeah, YouTube. We'll get to Dion in a second. Thrifty's in the chat, youtube.com slash CBS Sports Radio. He said, wait, y'all no need to breathe? Dude, come on. Celebrity picks. We do them uh, every Friday. Yeah, of course need, we know Need to Breathe. Need to Breathe. If you actually, the ESPN plays them all the time. They have a lot of rejoin music on ESPN. I'll point it out next time. I'll call everybody. <laughs> Especially uh, <laughs> right. Thrifty in the chat. Hey. Call him directly. Yeah, Thrifty, turn on these WNBA highlights. <laughs> quick, 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 quick. <laughs> it's need to Breathe. <laughs> oh, it's over. Uh, thank you, Bogus, for the highlights. Let's get to our Daily Dion. Daily. Do you believe in that? Dion. You believe in that? All right, well, Colorado goes into their bye week off of a brutal loss. Stanford, double overtime. That's a sentence I never thought I'd say into a microphone. Uh, double overtime, they lose. They were up 29 nothing. Deion Sanders gets philosophical in his post-game press conferences pro-off. And this one was particularly brutal after they lost to Stanford. So he started talking about whether his team actually loves football because he loves football. Sadly, I love it so much, but the game don't even occupy the ability to love you back. That's a strange love, isn't it? You can just hear the pain there. I never thought about football not loving you back. It is such a brutal sport. I never thought anyone would expect love back from football considering the damage it does to your body. Wait, what's he saying here? He's saying football has not loved him back? feels like football is giving him Dion a lot of love back. Hall like fame. Super Bowl rings, Hall of Fame, kind wow. of an this, awesome coach. This is also very clearly a play on the paid in full line from, you know, Makai Pfeiffer, where he says, you know, you know, yes. it's, you know, the game don't love me, but they don't love you back, though. And he, I feel you, A. I yeah. do, man. But see, man, I love the game. I love the hustle. Like, Dion totally taking it from paid in full. Oh, okay. Yeah. But still, Wait, they talk about football in that scene, though. No, that scene is about uh, street life. Yeah, I was gonna say that scene is about a drug deal. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yes. Right, but, right. That, but that this is, but this is the cadence. Everything is yeah. the same. Man, oh, okay. how much is he ripping off? Every coach does, though. Every yeah, everyone does. I'm I not, mean, I'm Jalen not even Hurts hating him no for it. In fact, I love the reference, but like that, like he's making it seem like it's original, but this is definitely paid in full. I know it's like Jalen Hurts quoting Nelson Mandela, but taking it for himself. <laughs> it's like, dude, it's not you. Um, Why do you have to go after Jalen Hurts? It just brings it all full circle in this segment. Um, yeah, right. Okay. Dion's getting a lot of heat these days. If you guys notice a new trend mm. that he seems to be deflecting, uh, and I never noticed this, that in his post-game press conferences, a lot of the players screwed up, a lot of the coaches screwed up. There's not a lot of eyes screwed up in this. No, thing. well, the other thing that he's yeah. doing, and I get why, because he's played really well, and it's his son, never a criticism of Shador. Oh, ever, yeah, yeah. ever, ever. I like but that. You know what? I like that. Uh, to be fair, though, like, find me a coach that really criticizes their quarterback I mean, in a press conference. That doesn't it? happen. Only Brian Dayball does stuff like that. What opportunities? Even, okay, he threw one pick, but, I mean, he was unbelievable in the Stanford game. There's not a lot of opportunities to criticize Shador that's this year. True. He's that's been true. nearly perfect. Uh, okay, that's your Daily Dion for today. Got a lot more to do, including uh, the hilarious moment from yesterday that had us just dying. We'll get to that in a minute. It's Maggie and Pearl off CBS Sports Radio. You're in a five-minute break.
4 minutes 30 seconds remaining. Four minutes remaining. Three minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Three minutes remaining. Two minutes, 30 seconds remaining. Two minutes remaining. One minute, 30 seconds remaining. One minute remaining. Forty five seconds remaining. Thirty seconds remaining. Fifteen seconds. Break ends in five seconds. Welcome back, Maggie and Perloff, Maggie Gray, Andrew Perloff, CBS Sports Radio. Oh boy, like we don't have enough of 
Oh. Enough, Taylor. I think I'm, I'm reaching my max. That was a great conversation with my 13-year-old and you about Taylor Swift yesterday. <laughs> yesterday in the car. Yeah, it was pretty good. My 13-year-old hates Taylor Swift. Doesn't just dislike her. Thinks she's everything wrong with American pop culture. That's because Why? your your teenage daughter is going through like a she's not, like, not like a punk rock phase, but just like a, anything that's popular, she's not going to like. Exactly. She's yeah. in that phase. She says Taylor is the worst dancer, and she dresses like a mom. That was her. <laughs> uh, it's just too poppy for her. She she likes definitely like underground stuff, which is crazy. Like she's telling me about bands like. Two years ago, she was watching Dora the Explorer. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Here. It was Baby Shark two years ago, and now she's uh, getting yeah. lit lounge. Uh -oh. All of a sudden, like she's she, I I like bring up a song. She's like, oh, Dad, you're so old. I mean, your daughter is definitely so much cooler than you. <laughs> she called Travis. And me. We asked her. So oh. me and Maggie were on the conference call. And my daughter was in the car, and Maggie goes, "You think?" I said, "You think Travis Kelsey is good looking?" She goes, "Dad, he's so." Oh, <laughs> like he's like an octogenarian walking his street. <laughs> yeah. Like he, walk, he goes to the game with a walker, you know? Anyway, um, this was interesting. Here was Roger Goodell, total left turn, who <laughs> was talking Speaking of heartthrobs, <laughs> Roger Goodell. <laughs> Ooh, Raj. Uh, he was on an NFL Live panel about uh, NFL in the United Kingdom. So this was last week. And he was asked about whether they would ever play the Super Bowl in Europe. To play a Super Bowl in a city where we don't have a franchise, that would be pretty hard to do. Um, it's not impossible, and it's something that has been discussed before. But I think it, being able to play it in one of our cities, um, it's a, a huge economic boost to those cities. Our fans live in those cities also. I think that's important. Not that we don't have great fans here. We do. And so... You know, as the international series develops, maybe that's a possibility as we play more games here. I mean, they add games in Europe every single year. So we know it's going to be, you know, it's going to increase. I'm sh I'm sure they're looking at ways to put teams in Europe and expand the footprint. But the Super Bowl in Europe feels like a bridge too far to me. Why would you want to do that? Well, because what do you gain from having it? You know, you're not getting a new audience by having it anywhere in America. So the the idea is to expand to the rest of the world by moving over to Europe. Okay, but the question is the timing, right? I yep. always thought you weren't going to have a big fan. You weren't going to have a lot of people watching in Europe because it kicks off at 640 Eastern time, which is like close to midnight in London. So you're asking people to stay up late on a Sunday, you know, to watch something they're not invested in. So ESPN reported, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not sure where, that they would play the game at 8.30 local, 3.30. It's five hours that time of the year, 3.30 Eastern. That's not too bad. Here's the thing about the Super Bowl, and I, I kind of believe this. It's a TV product. So what difference does it really make? I guess there's some lead-up. I feel like the lead-up is a little overrated. The media loves it, of course, because they all get to go there. But generally, I, I think once you're watching the game, do you care where it is? I don't care where it is, but you're going to tell me the Super Bowl is going to kick off at noon on the West Coast? Like, that seems crazy. What about, you know, first of all, the buildup, they sell te they sell ads. I mean, it kicks off at 3.30. It's not that late. I don't know. Noon feels a little early for the Super Bowl to me. Now, granted, I'm 40, so I'd love it. <laughs> Let's play this thing at 11 o'clock in the morning. That jives with my schedule. But I feel like they're losing out on so much advertising money in the buildup, mm. in the lead-up to the game oh, that day. Oh, God. Dad, there's nothing more boring than the six-hour pregame pre show. I'm telling you, I bet they I, sell tons of ads against it. Well, it's still, okay, 3.30. I'm not sure that's that big a difference. But as far as, like, the experience and having everybody at the city, I, I think the fact that who cares that it's in Miami, you know, the next couple of years, or it's in San Francisco in two years or three years, does that really affect most of the people watching the game on TV, okay. which is the 99.9% .9 of the audience? I get it. It's 100 million people or whatever watching on TV. But I also think it's a big lift. Like, say you're a Lions fan. Yeah. And you've been waiting for your team to get to the Super Bowl your whole life. and Or multiple generations have been waiting for this their whole lives. And then all of a sudden you get there and it's like, all right, you were already probably, if you were going to go, you already know it's going to be expensive as all get out. So now you got to do a European flight on top of that? Like... You're asking your fans to do too much there. Yeah, I mean, the tickets are insane right now, so I'm not sure all these Lions fans can afford to go. That's all a good point, but I, I think if you're... Is it going to water down? Is the Super Bowl going to be bad because it's in London? I think it's kind of like at a neutral site anyway all the time. It's in Vegas this year. It's obviously not going to be the Raiders, so... I just, so I think at the end of the day, Super Bowl is a TV product, and that's how they view it. They don't really care that much about the location. 
But that there are 32 owners who all want it in their cities to be like a show off my city. Definitely. Let's get to our shot of the day. He shoots! <laughs> And the shot of the day is brought to you by Casamigos Tequila. Casamigos Tequila is brought to you by those who drink it. People like me today. Uh, shot of the day comes from earlier. Um, looks like we stumbled upon a new segment, sexually suggestive hockey highlights. The Capitals in flames in D.C. So Kuznetsov is going to start it off here. And we'll see if he pulls out the move. He sure does. <laughs> going to slow it down along the right side. And just going to tap at it here all the way to the net. Slow it down through the right circle. Tap, 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 and score. <laughs> it works almost all the time. 60% of the time, it works every time. <laughs> yeah, that's a very... That doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, John Walton on Caps Radio. Suggestive <laughs> call there. Right? A <laughs> little bit. I mean, if my mind is perennially in the gutter, but uh, <laughs> it's like God. he's ready for the move. And mm, I'm a little slow. slow. Yeah. Now I get it. Okay. <laughs> tap, tap. Tap, tap, tap. I was like, why is Bogus playing this clip? <laughs> <laughs> what was that line in Anchorman? It was like Panther Cologne or something, right? Uh, 60% of the time uh, works every time. Uh, yeah, and this is true. I'm looking at hockey terms that could be confused for sexual innuendos. Yeah, I'm not going to read them out loud. Yeah, no, we all get But it. they're pretty good. Yeah, hockey is basically, now I'm, it's, it's a very, very dirty sport. That here. guy knew what he was doing with that highlight. But yeah, yeah. Bogus? <laughs> no, oh, oh, the play-by-play the, the play oh, the guy. Play -by -play guy? <laughs> yes. Well, we Bogus know. definitely knew what Well, we know it. Bogus where his mind goes immediately. <laughs> He's watching <laughs> hockey all of a sudden. It's, ah, it's hot under the collar. Yeah, this could be a great way to incorporate hockey into our show more. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. <laughs> because my short-lived Connor Bedard <laughs> fandom is, I admit, it's dwindling a little bit with the baseball playoffs and football at night. It's hard for me to watch every minute he's on the ice or any minute he's on the ice. <laughs> Suddenly that Blackhawks-Winnipeg Jets game is not I watched as... two Blackhawk games. Uh, yeah, and honestly, I think I'm jumping on a new bandwagon. I'm no longer a Blackhawk fan. Look I've had enough. Fair weather. It's not even, you know, the end of October. Yeah. EJ, can we update the final poll results, if you will, from our question today? Should the Chargers hire Bill Belichick just to bring this thing totally full circle? Yes, we can. So should the Chargers hire Bill Belichick? 46% say yes. 53% say no. I just, like, what's what's the no? Like, he's going to be better than Staley. That's the best part about this. Is Bill Belichick, are, are the Patriots better coach than the Chargers this year so far? They can't do anything I'm still right. Going with They're Belichick. the worst special teams in the league. That's coaching. <laughs> well, thank you to EJ Stewart. Thank you to Pete Pilotti. Thank you to Andrew Kaplan, to Andrew Bogish, Weedos, coffee drinkers, callers. You guys are amazing. We will see you tomorrow. Wednesdays means the great debate series continues. We'll see you then. God just impregnates me with something to give to them.